I'm late, but I'm here. I'm coming. Hang on. Oh god, almost fell over. Ta-da! We're here. Hi guys. You're never late. We're running KST here. It's true. That was like the best thing I've ever invented was KST. Actually, I think one of you guys invented it, but still. It's just, you know. It saved me a lot of headache. Let me close that. <sighs> yeah, sorry, Didi. I know I said prize. I meant surprise, so. You claim second? Yes, you win, Matt. You were second place. Which is obviously, or objectively, better than first. If you're talking about, like, going to a party, yeah. I think it's better to be there second. I never want to be the first person to show up at a party. Hi, Oob. Is Kindred playing League? No, I'm making League. I'm making League 2.0. It's way better. What's up, Prestige? Hi, Cicerone. Hi, Monkey Socks. So happy to catch a stream as it starts this time. Yeah. The be the beginnings of the streams are the best. I don't know why, though. They just are. Okay. I'm hydrated. I'm mostly fed. I have more granola bar left. I'm scared you, monkey. I'm sorry. I don't know why it scares people so much when they... Like, you click on a stream and you're expecting someone to talk and then... Once like it's starting, so you just have music playing, and then suddenly someone just starts talking, and it's, it always scares me too. Oh snap! Sorry, I have to read a message from Jonas Tyroller right real quick, who just messaged me on Twitter. Jonas said that he played Swords and Magic on a YouTube video. Do you guys remember that? Hang on, we have to go look. Why do I not remember that? Um. Six commercial games were made by YouTubers. He did? When was this? A year ago? Do I remember this? Wait, hold on. How did you say my name? Okay, Sports and Magic and Stuff by Mikael Kocha. Mikael Kocha. That's exactly how I pronounce it too. It's perfect. If you guys are wondering, it's Michael Kosha. Kosha. But most people growing up called me Kacha. Michael Kacha. So, I mean, Mikhail Kocha. Name butchered. Oh, yeah, this is like, this, this was a year ago? There's no, the, the new tutorial isn't even a year old yet. Wow. It seems like this was like four years ago. Yeah, I forgot he played this on stream. I think I probably watched this when it came out, I assume. I assume I did. I'm a, I want to watch it again later. Anyway, um, yeah, I messaged him last night because I played Thronefall. So you guys were all like saying like, whoa, guys, or dude, this game looks a lot like Thronefall. And you're right. Um, I think it's going to have a totally different vibe and a totally different like art style and everything too. But you're right. It did. When I played, I went and bought Thronefall and played it. And two things really stood out to me. One is his trailer on... I'm, I'm like peeking with that, aren't I? Uh, the trailer on his YouTube is like insane. Um, it's not like it's not like a super fancy like high like high crafted or whatever like. Uh, did I say YouTube? I meant Steam. Uh, Steam trailer. Um, but he like talks through it, and it's so down to earth and so indie and so like it's such a good vibe. That like just watching his trailer it makes me like feel like I I know him, 
and makes me and like and he's also like we're just two guys making a game so you know this isn't a huge game that's why the price is so low and he's like talks about all that stuff and i'm like this is so weird hearing this it's such a nice contrast compared to like most games even indie games sort of just like a super high polished trailer right so it was just kind of like i don't know kind of loved it um and i think that's why it's doing i think that's a big reason why it's doing so well not to mention it was like you know 100 plus thousand followers on youtube what is what does he have 180,000. So, I mean, he's got a big following. Um, but I asked him also because on the top of his Steam page, he also has um, the, like, streams, like the live stream playing on Steam. Um, look it up, Oob. It's actually pretty good. It's like seven bucks. Like, you can't go wrong with seven dollars. It has, like, 8,000 positive reviews, I think, or something crazy like that. It's insane. It's like 97% positive. It's really good. I only played the first couple levels um, because then I, I was inspired to go back to work. So <laughs> that's what I did. But yeah, it's really good. It's very similar to what I'm making, but there's definitely some major differences. Like, I, I don't think that I'm going to be like stepping on anyone's toes. And I don't think our game is going to be like, I don't think anyone's going to play it and be like, yeah, this is just Thronefall 2.0 or whatever, or like, or, you know, I mean, not 2.0, but you know what I mean? Not like isn't like better, but this isn't just like a new a Thronefall clone. I, I don't think so. Anyway. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, so I asked because he's live streaming on there and obviously he's not really live streaming on there um, 24 seven because every time I've gone to his Steam page, it has him playing the game at the top and there's no way he's actually playing the game at the top the whole time. So um, yeah, that's that's why I messaged him because I was curious about that because we tried one live stream on on Steam and didn't see a single like a dent in sales. But I do wonder if having that up there like actively. Sorry, I'm opening a drink ASMR time. Um, I wonder if opening or sorry. <laughs> I wonder if having that up there actively like helps. I think it's I think what it does is make the game look like it's still actively in development, which Swords and Magic is, um, even though we're dialing back a little bit right now, it's still actively in development. I worked on it yesterday. I'll work on it again later today and I'll work on it tomorrow because it's just that's it's just part of it's going to become part of my workflow um, to work on that and then also work on this one until this is done. So, yeah, so maybe having a live stream of me just like playing through the game and talking about it uh looping 24 7 on there would would when some people click on the thing they're like oh cool this is still actively in development because they're like live streaming on the page right now um and, and i bet like 80 percent of people don't realize that it's going to be a recorded loop you know and the people who do realize probably already own the game or don't care you know or maybe they do care and then i lose a sale but like i just think it's going to help more than it's going to hurt so uh that's why i reached out to jonas and he got back to me which is awesome Anyway, someone was saying something about Arnold Arnold Palmer's yesterday and they were like, yeah, I can only find the light ones anywhere. And I was like, yeah, the light ones aren't as good. This is light. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I didn't even notice the difference. I just bought it and um, yeah, it tastes fine to me. But uh, Jana and I, when she was pregnant, um, she had uh, gestational diabetes, which is like a diabetes you get while you're pregnant sometimes. And um, so we were on a big, uh, she couldn't eat a lot of uh, carbs and sweets and stuff. So we were on kind of a, a health kick around here and so we were doing a lot of like diet teas and diet just you know everything that just had like less sugar um not soda that would just had tons of sugar anyway um but yeah so um so I've, I've kind of gotten used to like more of a like a less sugar taste which has been nice but then again we've also kind of we've, we've lost touch on that from that anyway uh what's up Anjumun? um i forgot how to pronounce it i'm sorry Will you be using voice acting for the game? Hmm. No carbs rip. <laughs> What's up, carbs? <laughs> um, I don't know. It would be kind of so I was just actually I just took a shower and, you know, these showers are nice to like think about things. And I was trying to decide what the beginning of the game would look like. Um, and I actually do think that the in the beginning of the game, it would be kind of nice to have like a little like dialogue box pop up and have like two people talking. And I'm thinking like. It could have a little bit of a campaign mode where there's like a story like, you know, oh, the, you know, the Shadow King or whatever we're going to call him. I kind of like Shadow King. That's what GPT gave me that idea. I'm, I'm OK, so I'm stuck on two names. I'm, I'm thinking Dwarvenhold. The problem is, would you if you Googled, if you Google Dwarvenhold, 
if you Google Dwarven Hold, you get um, a bunch of stuff about like there is a Dwarven Space Hold uh, Magic the Gathering card, which is obviously going to take precedent in Google searches. And then there's a bunch of random things where people are talking about Dwarven Holds as in like locations in other games or, you know, RPGs like D&D &D and stuff like that. So there's there's some stuff there. So I'm also thinking Siege of the Shadow King, which would give us SOS, which is kind of cool. Or SOTS, I guess. Or or SOSK, I guess. Yeah, it'd be it'd be SOSK. SOSK. Uh my brain is working this morning. Um but I like I like Dwarven Hold because it's simple, it's one word, it tells tells you exactly what it is in the title. Um and then Siege of the Shadow King also does that, but it's definitely a longer title. And Swords and Magic and stuff is a very long title, so I've been trying to get away from that. I would like to do just one word. Um, I think Thronefall nailed it with with the title Thronefall. And they went through like a hundred different titles and like mocked them all up and everything. I just watched, I, after playing Thronefall, I was like, I want to watch the devlogs again because I watched a few of them before the game came out. So I watched through almost the whole devlog series again um, yesterday, which was really inspiring. <laughs> um, it's insane to me they spent, they spent almost 60 days, I think it was. Um, in pre-production before they even landed on what game they were making and they remade it like three times um we don't have that luxury nor do i want to do that um because i have like a billion game ideas and i've kind of been in pre-production for those game ideas for a long time and this game was like never on the table and then it just like clicked and i was like this is the one we just gotta i just, I just gotta make this <laughs> so anyway um what was i just saying though that okay oh the name yeah Anyway, so yeah, I think it would be kind of cool to have like a little bit of a campaign where like the first uh, the first level is just like, oh, the Shadow King is sending uh, scouts in to, you know, like whatever we should defend like against them. And then they'll just send like these like really lazy low level like scout troops, whatever, to like a tutorial level and just have to defeat like three of them, whatever. <laughs> and then the next the next campaign or the next level would be like your advisor or whatever telling you like. We should gather resources or whatever is the, you know, the Shadow King's mounting an attack or something. or must be preparing, preparing for attack. And then you defend against scouts while you're like building up a little bit of your base. And maybe we have like, I don't know if we like lock parts of our base off or you just let players play. And when they win, they win or they whatever. Um, I haven't decided yet, but anyway, uh, Shadow King sounds great. Cool and great for helping my anxiety. Wait, what? I'm currently doing early time restricted feeding early time restricted feeding 11 a.m to 4 p.m and it's lit for controlling blood sugar i love that you call it feeding restricted feeding like you're a baby <laughs> like, like someone is feeding you I'm sorry matt i'm just i'm just joking i don't know what else you would call it but like i guess restricted eating i don't know um 11 11 a.m to 4 p.m so you're only allowed to eat food with between those those times i guess that makes sense because it gives your body a ton of time to digest is that why? It's a scientific term, sir. <laughs> what is is it's a scientific term? Fair enough. It still sounds goofy. Maybe you should make a souls like Lies of P, considering how hard Swords of Magic already is. Uh, just call it World of Holdcraft or Stronghold or Hold Strong. Yeah, okay. The side quests won't have voice actors. There won't be side quests. Wait, are you talking about swords and magic, Anjun? If you're talking about swords and magic, no, there will never be voice acting. This is a different game. I'm working on a new game right now. If you're talking about swords and magic, no, there's just there's literally like probably like five thousand lines of dialogue already. There's no chance we would ever put uh, voice acting in it. It just it would cost us it would cost us like a hundred thousand dollars probably to hire a voice actor. Um, and it would take me probably like three months to like put like not. Yeah, like that would be so much work to put that in. And it's just it's not worth the effort. You know, the game is not selling right now. Um, hardly at all. It's like barely making any money right now, which is why I'm working on something new because I've got to make money. Um, so it's either work on another game uh, while we still have a little bit of money. And the game's still making some money or I keep working on Swords and Magic on, you know, a hope and a prayer that it finally one day makes some money or takes off or whatever. Uh, and then in three months from now, we'll be completely broke 
and the game will still be in the same spot and then I have to go get a job at McDonald's or something, you know? So like, I'd rather just work on another game right now as like my primary focus, which is what I'm doing as of yesterday officially or Tuesday officially. Um, this is my new primary focus right now and Swords of Magic is still being worked on. It's just kind of being, it's just on the back burner. I'm just working on it. Um, like I'm still working on it every day, but only about an hour or so a day. So it's just being big right now. In fact, um, it was in a pretty broken state as of Tuesday um, because we had a, another programmer helping out and then there were some differences and so he's not on the team anymore. And there were a couple bugs that were still in the game uh, when he left. And so some of those bugs were really major, like NPCs were super broken when the server wasn't nearby. Uh, and I didn't really know how to fix them and don't really have the help right now. So uh, I pretty much reverted all, the, all everything he did. But luckily, um, when we, we worked through everything together to figure out what needed to be fixed for performance reasons. And so I know now blueprint wise how I can go through and fix a lot of the performance problems we were having. So I'm hoping I don't think we'll see as many. I don't think we'll see. I don't think we'll see as much of an improvement because we moved some stuff to C++, which I don't plan on doing right now. Um, I would like to learn here soon, but I don't plan. I'm not planning on right now. So I don't think we'll see as much of an improvement as we did before with C++, but uh, we will still see a performance improvement when I get done with all the refactor stuff. But with that said, um, it's a lot of work right now and I'm kind of avoiding it because it's a lot of work and I'm like want to do other things. So how are the assets uh, Arcane toy box is going OK. I have not released an asset since Halloween. Um, I did my mystery asset pack for November already and I will have another one for Christmas or for uh, December. Sorry, not, not just Christmas. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I'm making about one hundred dollars a month on them, which is great. Like, I can't complain about an extra hundred dollars a month. Uh, so, like, my goal is just to keep releasing more assets over time. I've noticed that the like environment assets, I don't know if the one I made is just like not comprehensive enough or not big enough or not. I don't know. Maybe it's not enough stuff. I don't know what it is. Um, I assume it's just not enough stuff, uh, but it's not selling very well. I've only sold like a couple of them. And they were both on like sale for like 60, 50 percent off, I think. Um, all my assets right now are on sale on the Epic Store. I think 50 percent off, maybe 70. I don't remember what I picked. So if you want to check it out, you can. Hundred dollars is a few cases of light arms. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'd be, I'd be drinking water right now, but our ice maker is in the process of filtering out a new water filter in the fridge. We don't need ice, so it's just it's just like semi cold water. I'm just not into that. So yeah, um, Arcane Toy Box is doing OK. Uh, I have another character that I've got like 80 percent done. She's all modeled. I just need to texture her armor and stuff and and then do some new hairstyles or uh, helmets, hats, whatever. And then some accessories like a sword, uh, shield, probably two handed sword, whatever. I don't know to go with her and then she'll be ready to go. I'm also really considering spending a weekend dropping her into Cascador and learning how to animate in Cascador um, because I really like the program and I really want to get better at animation. Um, I'm not bad at animation. I just it's just tedious for me and I think Cascador is going to save me a ton of time. So I want to do it. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that. I just have not like got around to like doing that yet. Because I have this going on and I have Swords of Magic going on and I have family stuff going on and we have stuff going on this weekend and we're, you know, Abby's birthday is coming up and we just painted her room and like Christmas is coming up. So there's just a lot going on right now. I don't have time to do everything. Asgore is the best. Yeah, I, I think I saw your video you posted on it. Uh, Prismatica. I don't think I watched it yet because I'd already been watching a bunch of videos on it and I think it was just kind of an overview. Um, but I'm I'm glad that you are also a proponent because I'm I'm a huge fan of it. I think it's great. And I'm really excited about um, learning it more. Anyway, let's get to work. I did a lot of work last night and yesterday. I had to do stupid refactor stuff all day yesterday for Swords and Magic. But then um, last night I got extra work done on this game and I'm having fun with it and I'm excited. Um, you might have seen I've been posting a lot more tweets. I mean, X's. So like I feel like I'm too late to the party for Twitter, like it's going to be dead before I like I'm going to start getting followers on Twitter and then it's going to die. Um, that's OK. Uh, and I don't know where else to be posting these things. I wish YouTube was like easier to like just post something stupid. Like I guess shorts, I should I should just be posting things as shorts, but it just feels like there's so much more effort going into those. So anyway, um, this is what we have so far. 
So we have guy running around. Obviously, we now have these guys spawning. Their their combat sphere is showing up now, so we can we're just debugging that, so we can see where they're where they can hit. There, I have um I built a spawn wave manager thing. Um, there should be another enemy spawning any second now. Like five second delay at the most, I think, because it's just on one guy. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's bugged. I haven't like fully tested it yet. I just got it working. There's another one. There's two more. Okay, so what it does is I have like a data table of um arrays of enemies and then a delay on and then a, a cooldown. And so how it works is it basically finds okay, so when they run into each other, this happens. They basically just stop moving. They should stop their animations too, um, but I guess that's not working. And then they should start fighting. There, we're gonna have a lot of pile up like this. I do have them on an offset, but when they go vertical, my offset doesn't work because I'm not doing like um, a tangent to the spline, which I should probably do. Um, I was like, I could spend extra time learning how to do that, or I could just do a random offset when they spawn and then deal with that. Uh, and that's what I've done, and now I've. I should probably just get rid of a lot of these vertical areas where the, the line is going up and down. So there's just more horizontal stuff, which is when I just start doing level design stuff, I'll probably do that. Um, but anyway, yeah, they should stop here and then they'll start combat phases right now. I think that should be working, but they have no animation montages for their combat, so they can't do anything. So they just stand here and look dumb. Uh, and then our skeleton horse guys are broken. I don't know why they're broken. Uh, but yeah, we have we have stuff going on. Um, I am a little concerned about when they get to the end. I think what I have to do is put like a box here. I guess. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do this. I, I'm thinking maybe what we'll end up doing is when we do like the final level design is we'll put these splines inside like the like the castle walls will like go out here. And then what we'll do is we'll have gates that open and close, which will just add a little bit of detail. I think Thronefall had the head gates, which was really nice looking. Um, it'll just add some details when the, when the units walk out of them, whatever. And then what will happen is I'll put a box in front of the gates that has a faction or whatever that can be attacked. And that'll be like the castle actual like combat thing. And then when the enemies hit it, it'll see that it's a wrong faction. So they'll stop before the gate and attack. And then the units that spawn on, on the, the spline on the inside can spawn on the spline, open the gate, and then attack the units who are attacking the gate, which I think will make the most sense. Because as of right now, the the enemies are going to hit the end of the spline right here. They're going to hit this end of the spline here and then start attacking the portals. And then the our units on our side are going to spawn directly on top of them, and they'll be like inside of each other at fighting each other, which will look really bad. Um, but for now, I think it's probably fine. And then we'll do the same thing probably on the for the enemy side. So we're gonna need a gate for both of them. So what kind of game will this, will this be? Um, it no, it's not tower defense. Um, currently, there are no towers, but that is on the table as a is some feature creep. Um, it is I'm calling it a lane based real time strategy game. So it's basically an RTS game where you have uh, resources to gather and you have harvesters you can produce. Um, the only difference really between like a regular strategy game or a real time strategy game and this is that there's three lanes like a MOBA. And when you spawn your enemies or your 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 people, they spawn. On one of the lanes, so these other just like they're just um, debug spawning right now. These are not this is not how they're actually going to spawn. Um, so what you'll do is you'll go gather resources manually to start with and then you'll walk over and build uh like barracks and a farm and a market and things like that whatever you want and then you can you get these spawnings up here and or spawners up here this is this corresponds to one two and three spawners these one two three spawners here and then you'll um click to spawn an enemy or an ally i mean at those spawners so i can just sit here and spawn them over and over again um, but they'll have like a cooldown and like a production time. So you'll click one, it'll go down to the production queue and it'll take a few seconds to like spawn it. And then you can just like load up a queue. I'm thinking about having a hold button, maybe like when you click one of these buttons here, it'll like hold it. So it won't spawn, it won't release the units until the queue is finished. So if you put like five things in the queue and click hold, once that queue is empty, like once there are no more things in the queue, then it'll spawn them back to back, like with like one second apart, half a second apart or whatever. 
So you can basically load up like a like a battle formation, I guess, or like a, you know, a troop of enemies or of uh, units. This could be very cool. Thanks. Do we just manage creep waves or do we have a champion that we manually control? Yeah, you're you're playing a champion. So the idea right now is that you will have like a hot bar down here with like attacks. Um, right now it plays like you use WASD, but I'm kind of considering MOBA controls and actually making it feel like a MOBA more. Um, and so then you would use uh, click to move and then QWER to, to use your, your abilities. Um, another idea, which is a, like, it's kind of like, I think it's going to happen, but it's still in the feature creep list right now. Um, right now, the goal is like, just get the base game done, make spawning feel good, make the combat feel good, make it so you can win around and then make and then add all the different um, units and stuff we want in and then just see what that, that feels like. If that feels really good, then we'll think about what we need to add in to like, or we'll, maybe we'll just polish from there and have like, that's the base game when we're done. And then we'll do a demo from that. Who knows? Um, and then I have a whole list of feature creep ideas. One of them, which I'm really leaning uh, toward, is a um, like a skill tree uh, that you unlock between runs. So you like get experience for defeating enemies, or whatever, or whatever, um, or maybe just winning runs. It doesn't matter. And then when you end it, you get experience and level up, and then you can put points into a hero skill tree. Um, and then so you can unlock things like different classes like class spells and skills and stuff like maybe there's like a warrior tree and a mage tree and like a healer tree or something or like a leader tree or something I don't know and then you'll like put points into those things like maybe I want to learn like a like a, a healing spell or whatever so I just put a point into that and then I unlock the healing spell and I can level it up too um so that's kind of the idea there and then you'll be able to like click your bar and like get a reticle to like cast and you can just come over and just like nuke the other team you know uh, the problem is like early on, I want that to be pretty limited because I really want you to have to focus on the units here. And I'm thinking you can't attack the enemy castle at all. That has to be done by your units. So you can't just come over here and just sit and spam the castle and win. And I don't think there's going to be a basic attack. I think it's just going to be your abilities and that's it. So there is going to be like hero unit. So I think that'll add a lot of stuff. Uh, we hundred percent need skill trees. I don't know about skill trees, but I think what, like, so another idea is I think the way Thronefall does it is you have a keep. And you can go in and level up the keep. So I'm thinking there'll be there'll be a way to level up all the buildings after you unlock them. Like we unlock the barracks here, but we could do what we could do is set it up. So after it's unlocked, you can just walk over and hold F on it again to upgrade it. And then it'll pop up with three cards, just like Thronefall does, and give you three options on how you want to upgrade your units from there. So this this controls this gives you footmen and uh, whatever this one is, uh, footmen and the uh, horsemen, I guess. It, it won't actually, though. I think it's going to be footmen and knights. Um, so then when you level up again, then it'll pop up and say, like, your footmen are 10% faster or your knights have 10% more health or your uh, all, all melee units do 5% more damage, things like that. Right. And then every time you level it up, it'll get more expensive. So you can keep putting more, res more resource, more resources into it. But every time you level it up, your guys will just get a little bit stronger and then it'll, it'll work the exact same for all the things you level up. So you'll have like. These are like harvesting ones, so you can use like a harvesting unit that'll go get stone or wood or wheat for you. And then like a, um, a blacksmith. I think this one's like a blacksmith. I don't know what this one is. It's it's whatever, whatever we want it to be. We have a sawmill here, so I don't know what this one is, um, but we can we'll just come up with all these things. We have a bunch of these these pieces in already. They're from an, an asset pack, and then I'm going to be supplementing these. Uh, Ryuthamus right now has been helping out with art. Uh, our deal is that if I don't like his art, he's going to sell it on the asset pack on the asset store anyway. So it doesn't matter if I deny his art. <laughs> um, but so far, so good. I'm liking what he's making and he's kind of mocked up a nice like level design as well. Um, but I already I have more ideas for level design like this down. This southern part is going to be like a deserty kind of area. And I'm thinking about a canyon like you'll go down. The units will go down into a canyon right here. And then uh, back out of the canyon. And so it'll be like this, these like big jutting like cliff pieces. And then the mining area will be like a branch off of the canyon down here. Uh, and then the harvesters will hit that certain point and then they'll switch um, movement modes and they'll move over and like start harvesting a point. And then when they're done and like get their like resources they can hold, they'll go back to the point 
and then carry it back to town. And then when they when you they get back to the portal, they drop it off and then you then they go back and do it again. So they'll just keep looping until they get killed by an enemy or if they do. Uh, and then the same thing will be like there'll be a farm in the middle where they can harvest from and the forest at the top. So um, I'm thinking the top will be like a big mountain pass, which will be cool. I want to add a lot of verticality. So it's like more interesting than just um, a hey, shout out to Rayothmus. Uh, where is he in here? I don't think he's in here. I think he's sleeping. <laughs> um, yeah, that worked. No idea. Fair enough. What's up, Joe? Uh, it's going well, though. What about branching class choices like uh, or where the minions you spawn like Final Fantasy Tactics? You can upgrade units mid game. Yeah, you can upgrade units mid game. So my plan right now is there's not a lot of upgrades between sessions. So every time you have a new session, you start back with nothing, with no buildings. Um, the only thing you're going to keep is your is your hero abilities, which might be like maybe you have passives like movement, movement speed, harvest rate, things like that. Or maybe you do have some like permanent abilities for like your things like, I don't know, or maybe you like unlock permanent things like maybe you like maybe you start with like a barracks and um, the harvesters and like. I don't know, maybe that's it, right? Maybe that's all you start with. And then you like play through a game and you like level up and then you unlock a new building building. So then when you play through again, now you have the archery training grounds or whatever. So now you can make archers and then maybe you play again and then you can like unlock a stable and now you have like horsemen and you unlock you play again and you can unlock like mages like you unlock a mage tower. I don't know. Things like that would be cool. So you have like additional units you can start playing with. So there's like more um, like repeatable content, not repeatable content, but like more content to go through. Um, yeah, thanks, Angel. Yeah, if you click on Rayathmus's link there, you can check out his stuff. Uh, he should have VODs up. So if you want to go see what he was working on yesterday, he started with a much like a map that was probably way too large, um, but we might go that route. I don't know. Right now, it's, it's pretty it's pretty small because the original idea was based on this Cartoon Wars game. I don't know if I can find like the, an original like image from it because. Oh, here you go. <laughs> OK, this was like the my like the first like idea that sparked. This is Cartoon Wars. Um, I shouldn't have. I don't trust Google Images. I don't trust anything on the Internet anymore. <laughs> OK, so this is like the original Cartoon Wars. You have like a little a tower and you have a bar of uh, enemies here or uh, of allies here. I mean, units. And then a mana booster. And so every like second you get one mana. Um, and so like after like 10 seconds, you can click and spawn your first little guy here. And I think if I remember correctly, you can swap these out like in the menu so you can unlock different units because I don't remember any of these units except for like these two first guys. So I think that you can like upgrade or change or whatever. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> anyway, so you like spawn them and they just spawn in front of your base and start walking forward, right? And then the uh, enemy is does like the exact same thing. They just spawn like on an on a, a, a interval and then you fight each other until so you one of you one of you like gets units to the, to the other person's base and you you win. Right. So that's it. There is a tower here and you can click. If I remember correctly, you can like click this and drag it up and down to angle your shots so you can um, use it to like shoot your the enemies. But I think it also hits your allies, hits your units. So you have to like be careful when you use it. Um, so maybe maybe we'll have that as an upgrade where you can like build a tower or something and like around your base. Um, another idea that people have had whoops, um, is like making um, like a, a midpoint somewhere that you can conquer. And if you if you get the midpoint first before the enemy does, or maybe the enemy already has it and you have to take it back, then you can lane swap. So if you get one here, then you can like choose like you like click it or walk over to it or whatever, and then it'll um, swap lanes. So they felt the allies will switch over to this lane and start keep going. So there's that. There's that. There's more options here. Um, so just full screen. Boom. OK. Balloon tower defense does that balloons, you mean balloons TD? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> I just realized that's what TD is so far. Like I knew that I just didn't put it together for right now. You unlock new monkeys to use for the next time. Yeah, I like that. How'd you get a grant? Uh, you There's an epic mega grant website. You just go there and sign up and you have to submit your game and everything. I got it for swords and magic and stuff, not for this game. But I wouldn't mind applying for this game. 
just kind of need something playable first. But yeah, the, the goal for this game is really to make something small. And I think by the time I got a grant like filled out and like applied for it, the game would be mostly done. So not really a point, but we could, I guess. <laughs> anyway, do we, we do have these towers so, like we could build towers like in the front or whatever here that could be like tower defense style, <laughs> which would be fun. Anyway, I think the plan for today is let's get the let's get the enemy horse working because I don't or the enemy mounted guy working because I don't know what's wrong with him and then we will start working on combat I think that's kind of where we're at right now um and then I'm we're gonna have to do a there's gonna be a lot of balance work to do like a a lot of like tweaking like the spawn rate and stuff um tweaking how many resources it takes this that's gonna be the hardest part of making this game I think is like getting it to feel really good so it's gonna take a lot of testers so if you guys are interested in testing, um, we have a dedicated testing team for Swords and Magic and stuff. That's like, I think like, like 10 people in it. I don't know. Matt will tell you he's like the lead tester. Um, but I think we should start working on a testing team for this game because as soon as it's playable, like hopefully, ideally this weekend, maybe today it, it'll be playable. Um, then I want to start getting testers on it to like make sure. Raise his hand. I'm in. Cool. Uh, can you make it Twitch interactive? Yes, that's actually, you know what? That was on, that was, that was an idea early on and I forgot, <clears throat> I forgot about that. How would we do it though? Enemy horse mounted guy. Uh, you have to call that in game. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, he's an undead writer is what he's, what he's called in game. Let's open him up and figure out what's wrong with him. <laughs> skeletal mesh. He is set to the cavalry. He's set to skeleton, skeleton mounted. Um, I think that we have an interface <clears throat> for get speed here, which I think is we shouldn't have to do this. We shouldn't have to imp uh, in, uh, implement that because I think the base character does it. Base pawn does that. Interface, get speed, manual velocity. So that should be working. I don't know why. The, the issue here is I'm using speed and max speed so I can like slow down characters, but there's not a way to do that right now. Um, I guess the manual velocity is just like. I don't know, I don't really know the, the velocity thing is kind of a. It's it's a little bit of like a mystery to me <laughs> because the way it works is and I, I don't like this, but I think it's better than having a movement component. But this is my tick on all the units, which is a little bit expensive. Um, I can have about 170 units or so before we drop below like 50 frames per second right now. Um, keep in mind, I'm an editor and I'm playing like in Pi, not even a standalone game. Um, and, and but there's also like no, there's like nothing fancy in the game yet either. So it's a little bit worrisome. <laughs> But yeah, so and I don't think we'll ever have 100 plus units on the screen. If we do, that is because people just picked like the cheapest units and are trying to like Zerg style and like. Zerg? Yeah, Zerg. Um, Zerg Rush. Um, it's been a while since I played StarCraft. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a thing that people are doing. We'll see, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so the velocity is basically just getting the last known location and comparing it to the new location not comparing but subtracting the new location and then dividing by delta time which is giving me a length and then I'm clamping that so the problem I don't know what the problem is there <laughs> I guess the problem is I just don't know what that number is <laughs> the velocity is kind of interesting <laughs> so I'm just pumping through like I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we change this. Maybe our animation blueprint doesn't need to be this complicated. Um, we don't even need like a speed. We could literally just have like an on or off, basically, like moving or not moving. <laughs> like um, we could probably just get in combat and see like if we're in combat, we stop moving and play idle like combat idle. And if we're not if we're not in combat, then we just play the walking speed or walking thing. Um, are the enemies like running? <laughs> I 
I need to start just simulating instead of doing this. No, they're running. They're a little slidey, but who cares? It's an RTS. So let's figure out why these guys are not working, though. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. So we're playing the mounted. Um, so that they should be running. This should be happening. Because that's working. It's 0 to 100. <laughs> oh, well, this might be the problem because we're not even doing anything here. Okay, so maybe I just forgot to do that. I thought I did that. I must have just like not finished setting it up. I was I was pretty distracted yesterday. Hold on, let's just simulate. We don't really need to play the game anymore, so simulating will be a lot easier than playing the game. Good. It was already working. Zerg, thank you. There he is. Now he's working. Very, very floaty. Um, but I mean, I like the mounted ones should be a lot faster though. Let's let's go turn their speed up. So here's another thing: is like balancing these guys too is not going to be fun. There's gonna there's this like that's the, that's why I've never really made a strategy game before because I knew the big problem was going to be balance. Um, and that is definitely still the case. Undead Rider. Um, speed, we're at 10. Let's do 16 for speed. And then let's simulate again and see what that feels like. <laughs> I'm not actually worried about the, the movement feeling floaty because it's an RTS game. There we go. Yeah, a lot faster. Um, I just want to make sure it makes sense that they're moving faster because they're on horses. You know, they're mounted. So I assume that in the beginning we're probably going to want, um, we need to make some like scout enemies that don't have weapons probably or just have like a sword and that's it. Um, but we the nice thing is that we have so we have all of these I'm right now I'm using. I mean, I'm using these like pre built characters, but the pack that I own um, also comes with all of the pieces, so all the parts. Uh, so like the cavalry parts, I have just the horse. Um, and then I have like bodies. I have full bodies and heads. Um, feet. Do the bodies have legs attached to them. Yeah. <laughs> and then arms, which is interesting. I don't know why they did the arms like that. You think they would have done like the arm from the shoulder, but I don't know. I guess that's where like the differences come in. So matter so yeah we can like mix and match make our own units uh, i'm hoping we can just like pretty easily like uh, make some color variations with the textures in these um because that'll help too and then yeah uh, i'm also thinking about buying some additional units that are like boss units uh, I don't know if these, if this same guy has stuff like that, but I did find a guy named Bitgem last night who does a lot of cool assets that would match the style, I think, pretty well. Um, and he has a bunch of like monster units, but I don't, I don't know if they're or, like monster creatures, but I don't know if they're um, animated because there was a bunch of rude things saying they weren't animated correctly or something. Anyway, I really wanted to make an RTS or city builder for ages. Same, actually. Jana and I have Jana and I love city city builders. She's obsessed with them. That's like her one of her favorite genres of game. Um, and uh, but the problem is, is we've only played one city builder that was co-op, and then we played um, Age of Wonders four, which doesn't it's not really co-op, but you can like have a truce, I think if I remember correctly. And we played like ten or fifteen hours of that in the same campaign, and we hadn't we still never finished it. Um, and that's all we ever played that game, but we both bought it because it and it's a blast. It's really good. It's like a it's like the closest thing you'll ever get to like a board game in. Well, I mean, there's a there's I guess there's like board game actual video games, but you know what I mean? Like in a video game that like feels like a board game, but like with way more content than a board game could ever like cram in. Um, and so Jan and I love that. 
Uh, but we, we can't really find any like city builders that are co-op, except there was one, but it was like so very difficult to get into that we like played for like an hour and we both lost and we were like, we don't even know what the hell's going on. There's like no tutorial and the tutorial that is there, it's like just a wall of text and it was just super frustrating and the reviews on it were pretty good, but it was like, this is not our type of city builder. We want something more casual than this, I guess. And so we, we gave up on that and refunded it. Um, but yeah, so we, so Jana has been itching for me to make a co-op city builder game. So one day we will make one of those too. I'm really liking this new approach where we make games in like much smaller amount of time so we can actually like make more games. Um, so I hope that I really hope that this game does pretty well, well enough anyway, to justify making another game uh, like at the same scope. And then I can just make a bunch of the ideas that I've had laying around and like feel more accomplished in my game dev career rather than just making one game for my whole life because <laughs> that's getting tedious uh, maybe chat can spawn units by typing spawn that'd be cool um the problem is like it has to be like we have to be careful with it right because we'd have to have um um which other game you mean um Alar uh alarion boss i do remember it yeah Maybe one day we'll we'll dust that off again and play it. It's probably, I think it's still pretty broken. I think the quest system was pretty broken. Um, anyway, yeah, so the Twitch chat thing would be awesome. I just don't know how it would work, because if you just if everyone in chat just started spot like spamming units, that'd be a problem. So I don't know, maybe maybe it could be that like every once in a while, like. An event can pop up or whatever and chat can vote on it. Uh, or like pick one of the two options. Maybe like there's an event where it's like um, an ogre appears or something. Or like maybe like a monster or a creature appears in the forest or something. And then you like pick like, is it an ogre or is it like a unicorn, whatever, right? And the unicorn will like help the player and an ogre would like hurt, like have to be defeated. Otherwise that lane, that lane is blocked off. And then chat would choose, like they would vote. That'd be kind of fun because then it'd be like, yeah, like that could work. And it'd be really easy just to spawn like enemy faction units like we could just like, you know, be really cool is I the, how I built the faction system is if you're if they're not of the same faction, then they are they fight, right? But we could build it like a more a more robust faction system where there's actually like ally factions and enemy factions. But as of right now, anything that's not a dwarf, your enemies will fight. But it also means the undead will only fight will fight anything that isn't undead. So we can do like um, a wild faction or whatever and spawn like wild animals on the path and they'll just be like a new unit that doesn't follow the path they'll just spawn on it maybe even just wander around it just for looks you know and then if the undead runs into them they'll fight them right and if your guys run into them they'll fight them so you can have like some units in the middle that <laughs> have your stream on the tv and quinn is quinn waved at me <laughs> hi buddy hi quinn Spawn mage, despawn mage. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it could be fun. I just think that if the if chat is just able to just spam spawning commands, that that's gonna be a problem, right? <laughs> it would be kind of cool if chat could like. I don't know. Let's 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 think more on it. If you guys have ideas for how Twitch chat could be inter integrated, please let me know because I would love to add that because I do think this game would be a pretty good streamable game, especially with Twitch integration. Um, I'm also thinking about integrating the Steam high score system. I noticed that Thronefall uses that and I was like, well, duh, why am I not using that? Like, that seems like so obvious to do something like that. So we're probably going to be integrating that as well. And this is way like future creep, but I've also been considering multiplayer and like every time I build something, I put a comment like this isn't going to work in multiplayer. You need to do this instead because it's like so much faster to build in single player and just to, you know, hack it together. But I'm keeping multiplayer in mind as I go and like kind of noting all the places where I need to change. It's really only going to be in combat and spawning units and resource gathering that and like, I guess, and building things are like the places where I really need to like replicate what's happening. Um, I, if we wanted to do PVP, this would take, wouldn't, it honestly wouldn't take that much work. It would just have to be like, 
oh, if you're of this faction, you can't go in this place, you know, because otherwise you could like run in and like buy things from the other place or whatever. No multiplayer. Yeah, of course you can play without Twitch. Yeah, it would just be an optional thing. Like in the main menu, it would just say like Twitch integration or something. You click on that and then it would have you like put in your um, your information, like your Twitch channel and stuff, because you need all that to like actually be integrated. And then it would just like pop up on like Chrome or whatever and be like, hey, do you want to are you ready? Are you OK with like allowing this access or whatever? And then you do that and then Twitch commands will just work. Um, the Twitch plugin I've used for this in the past works like super well. Uh, and it's only had it's only had better upgrade updates since then, from what I understand. So, um, yeah, it would just be an optional thing that you could go in and do if you were streaming. And the nice thing about it is that if a play, if someone was like checking out a game and they saw, oh, it has Twitch integration, then immediately think like, oh, this would be fun to stream. Right. And I think that promotes streaming a lot. <laughs> Control your man. Unsubscribe. Downvote. Please no multiplayer. I'm just saying PVP would be pretty fun. I think PvP in this game would be really interesting and it would add a lot of longevity to the game. Uh, the big problem is that I don't really know how to do server authoritative things. Like for some reason, there's like my brain just does not like compute how that works because like you still have to send commands from the client. And then how does the server check that kind of stuff? Like, I guess the server then grabs the client and says like, hey, do you actually have these things? Or, or I guess we have to store those things on the server. I don't know. I don't know. See, that's why I'm, I guess I could think through it probably if I thought hard enough or if I Googled it. But I'm, I don't know, I'm just considering it. It's really not necessary. I think it'd be a nice update. Like it was like, cool, we launched the game. Look, a lot of people like it. Let's, uh, let's do a poll and see if people want multiplayer, right? Um, because I think co-op would be really fun but totally unnecessary and probably not even practical. Like co-op would just make it like twice as easy to, to harvest resources and then nothing else about the game would change. But PVP would be really fun. And I even like I was even considering like how could we do this with like three enemy types? Like maybe um, like maybe you have two lanes. Um, and you have three, not not three, sorry, uh, three factions. So you'd have like two lanes, I guess, at each faction, and they would just like point to the other factions, right? So you just have one lane per faction. You lose a lot of strategy as far as like how you approach each faction because you have three options right now, and you only have one option if you did that. So I guess you could do six lanes and have three lanes to go to each faction, uh, or even like two, maybe just two lanes for each faction would be better. Um. So you'd have four lanes to manage. I don't know. Maybe that's a maybe that's a possibility in the future. It could be kind of fun. You had to worry about like defeating two different enemies. It's easy to figure out. Just don't do it. <laughs> I think it would be worth the hassle because the thing is, like, if we do a campaign mode and the game takes, you know, like three hours to get through, then that's like pretty much the game, right? Like people don't have a whole lot of like repeatable content to get through because probably by the time they're un they're done with the, the campaign, they're going to have everything unlocked, right? Because I really don't want it to be like so grindy that you're like playing this game for 100 hours to unlock all your skills or something. Um, I think it could be kind of fun if every time you play, you have to choose like you only have like so many spaces to build buildings or so many things to build buildings on. So you. I don't know. I don't know, because like if you if you always have the exact same setup in it. So let's so let's say this is your stop. Let's say this is your setup. You have whatever oh, this building is. What is this building? A workshop. <laughs> Who knows what that is? Um, but let's say you have um, your barracks, a workshop, a mage tower, a market and the three harvesting like, like locations. Thanks. Right. So that's uh, seven. That's seven buildings. So every time you play, you have those seven buildings and it's going to get old pretty fast because you're going to find a strategy that works. But if every time you play, like maybe not like every campaign level, like these change or they could be randomized. We could add some like roguelike kind of elements or the, the, the things you have changed or it could be designed like, oh, and this one, like we don't have archers or whatever. Or we're waiting on the archer trainer or something or training or something. So we don't have archers this time. So good luck. And there's just like challenges like each campaign level. I don't know. What do you guys think? 
Please, will you guys please design this game for me? I don't want to do it. Campaign long enough you can't refund. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but that's kind of like, I, that's always been my goal is like, if I make a small game, it has to have at least two hours of content in it. Like, at least two hours of like, stream like streamlined content that just like keeps going so there's no there's never a time where you have to like stop and decide if you want to refund like you just like you have two whole hours of like gameplay to get through that's like fun and streamlined swords and magic almost does that we kind of drop the ball on that because once you get to um town it's a little overwhelming and like spreads out too much and then there's a good chance right then to stop playing and refund and that's about an hour hour and a half in depending on how long this tutorial takes you Multiplayer adds replayability by itself, which is great, but it is hu a huge amount of more work from my experience. Just had the budget for it. I know how to make multiplayer. I made Swords of Magic as multiplayer, and I've done a ton of work on there. Um, it definitely is more work. It'll be um, like we'll have to have like matchmaking, which is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> I'm not sure if we would add chat functionality. I don't think so. It would be kind of cool if your unit could have like um, emotes or whatever pop up. You could just have like a, a bar of like emotes you can just click from just just like show expressions like wave and, you know, sneer and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, just have like little like emoji like emojis. Um, because I don't know if I'd want like a, a chat because it just would get toxic. Um, and the fact that it's a real time strategy makes me feel better about multiplayer because I so I play I, I rarely play mobile games, and when I do play a mobile game that has like PvP or it's like turn based, like you're waiting for someone else to take their turn, I hate that because you're like waiting and it makes me like I always feel like I'm super rushed, like especially like card games. Like I will never play like Magic the Gathering or um, Hearthstone because like the whole like wait, like people waiting on me to do something makes me super like antsy. I can't do that. Like it gives me too much anxiety. <laughs> Clash Royale. Anyway, yeah, but P but PvP is not too bad. So can you choose where to place buildings? No, um, and the only reason is because I don't think there's any point. It just feels like an extra layer of work on my end and layer of like processing for the player to do uh, that doesn't make any sense. I don't think castles were all, were all gonna be just like this boring square. I think we're gonna change this. I actually think because they're dwarves, I think we're gonna have a big mountain right here. And then the castle will be kind of built into the mountain in like a cool shape. And so you'll like, yeah, like it'll it'll be a more interesting base. But um, there's no there's not really any point to putting like if it's a real if it was an actual real time strategy game, then you'd want to put your important buildings near the back, right? Because then like enemy units can't get to them to destroy them. But your buildings will never get destroyed in this because you just have one overall. It's like a tower defense game when the units get to you, then you lose points. Like you you lose like one life. It'll be similar to that, except when they get to you, they'll just start attacking and then you can defend. So you'll have units like you'll have like access to units like siege weapons. Like I think we should actually have one. Uh, hang on, I'm pretty sure we have some. Yeah, so we have a, a ballista, a catapult and a ram. So like the ram would probably do a ton of damage against the the wall maybe the catapult is like super long range so it would like stop as soon as it saw a unit and start shooting at them the problem is no i guess that would work because then the unit would just keep walking so they have to just it would just keep like shooting at them until it got to them so that could work um and then uh, i guess the ballista would do the same thing i suppose maybe the catapult is just like it's a huge area and the ballista just hits one enemy. I don't know. Either way, we can have siege weapons as units. These are totally in here and like usable. Um, so those could do like tons of damage to the thing, like especially the ram. The ram could just be like not it could do like zero damage or like eh, I guess it have to do some damage, like one damage, whatever to like enemies, the un enemy units. When you get to the thing, it would do a ton of damage. <laughs> so I think there's like there's a lot of strategy there, too, where you're like, cool, I'm end game now. Now let's build some like rams and then we'll put one on each lane or whatever and we'll we'll you know put in front of them a bunch of like defense guys so they can defend it because we could also make them really weak so they can get destroyed really easy um but yeah okay so yeah so 
but yeah, we don't we, we can't like place or pick where we place the buildings. They're just going to be on like empty plots. But yeah, we could choose what building goes there and then have a limited number of locations, right? Which I think would be pretty fun because then you have then you, like you might have 10 buildings at, like that you have access to, but you can only pick like five, right? And so you have to decide like, okay, do I want three different harvesters or should we just focus on like one harvester for wheat and then I'll go harvest all the other stuff. Or should we just build a market which can get all the all the stuff we want, um, you know, or so, I don't know, something like that. Like, I don't know what the market's going to do. I, I guess the market's just probably just going to produce resources for you. Or maybe. Maybe the market lets you buy resources for gold and maybe you get gold from fighting enemies. I don't know. That could be. That could be too much work. Anyway, let's just get combat working because we're almost to MVP and I want to get that working today and we haven't done any work yet to any work yet. So yeah, I guess we did some work. We got the enemy units spawning. OK, so what we need to do is when they run into each other, they need to stop moving and they need to fight. So let's first of all, let's go to their. OK, let's do this. We're going to go to our pawn unit. We're going to go to. We're going to refactor our animation blueprints real quick before we go any further. So blueprint. BPI unit. And we're not going to do we have get speed. Wait. Oh, wait, animation, I think. Is that what I'm using on units. Animation, that's fine. <laughs> Instead of get speed, we're going to change this to Um, no, we'll use gets, we'll keep get speed because we'll use that for our, our, uh, our player character. Let's do in combat. Output in combat. Compile, save, and then we'll go to pawn unit and we'll do. In combat. Uh oh. Oh, shoot. I screwed up. Did I not compile? Is it because I named? Oh, I'm done. I named something the same as a variable I already had, so it broke things. Oh, this isn't what I want. I don't know what that graph was that I had open, um, but I hope it's gone. That's right here. OK, now. We'll switch back here and instead of getting all this junk, um, we're just going to make we're just going to do Unit in combat. I'll promote this. Copy that because we're going to use it everywhere else. And we have to go in here and we're going to do. Blend by bool. And then in combat will be our value here and then blend times 0.1. That's fine. Do Let's do point three. And then false will be, I guess we'll just do. Yeah, Calvary Idol. <laughs> That's not the idol I wanted. That's OK. Why is he like not moving? keeps happening to me. I'm I'm in here. I hit type. I search for idle and I hit enter and it. Yeah, so it's opening. It was happening yesterday, too, and I thought, am I like double clicking? Like, why am I double clicking on these? Like, I should know better than to double click on those. 
So uh, this should, yeah, like I don't even need the blend space anymore. Oh, that's why, duh. That's why it's that's why it's being stupid because it's it's doing this. Why is combat? It should be false though. So. Can I make these? Sequence. Exposes pin. Promote to variable. This is going to be um, idle or uh, combat idle. Delete this. Actually, hold on. What are we doing this for? We don't even need this. Let's just do this. We're learning things right now. And then if we're in combat, this should like <laughs> this is called combat idle, but I don't even know why it matters. Like, can I just get like a generic one or does it matter? Can this just go? It can't. I guess it doesn't matter. If we're in combat, we do the combat idle. Otherwise, we do oh, this one and this one's going to be. Um, run. Uh, anim. I don't know. <laughs> Run animation, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't matter. OK, and then these can be. When we initialize, we'll just grab these. So we need to go back here. There's like a animation initialize, right? Yeah. We'll do this. And then we'll go back to our animation graph and we'll do git. Um, look, look, motion animates, anims, and the output's gonna be we need idle and running, and these are gonna be animation sequences. Can I do a soft, and eh, it doesn't matter, does it? It'll be fine. OK, so now this is a little more work with to refactor all these, but I think it'll be worth it in the end, because then actually technically. We only need. I guess we still need one for this because it's a different skeleton than the other guy, but now we can like now every single unit can have different animations for like their idle and run, which is pretty cool. So like the archer can literally have his own archer one now because I was just doing generic. I was like, well, which one looks best for everybody? But now I can just like that'll be really easier, like swap that out now. So cool. OK, get anims, animations, get locomotion anims. Here we go. Combat is idle. That's fine. Ah. Oh my god. Why are you wasting my time? Okay. Okay, let me catch up on chat. Can you not just use an animation blueprint template for that? Um, I don't know. I've never made an animation blueprint template. I've always just done animation blueprints one way because I Googled it a long time ago, like five years ago, and I was like, how do I make an animation blueprint? And then I watched a tutorial and then when I forgot how to do it, then I watched the tutorial again and then I just copy from my old animation blueprints. So I've never really experimented a whole lot. This is probably the most out there I've gotten with an animation blueprint, to be honest, other than like I have played around with like blending animations um, like uh, like blend by bone stuff where like 
the upper half like can attack while the bottom half's running and stuff like that. Um, but that's about it. But yeah, if you know of a template, what's up, Ryan? How's it be does? It be does good. Um, but yeah, I think, I think Zab, I think what you're saying is like, pick where, like pick what building you place where. I think that's probably the move. I think that's how we should do it. Okay, so this should be working now. So all we need is to check this back and forth and then we'll have these set up. So we should be able to, like this should be working. Why is he not animating? Maybe because they don't have animations, so he's just stuck in his like T pose kind of. <laughs> um, that's probably what it is. Uh, let's also go to. We should probably go to like our unit struct and add on the animations. <laughs> so let's do. Yeah, this is where we probably should do a soft reference here. We could, I guess we could load them when we get them in. Let's do it. Let's just, let's just do it the right way. Idle animation, and then we'll make one for run animation. And I'm moving faction up higher because I have to change it a lot and it's annoying to get it at the bottom of the struct or grab it a lot. Okay, and we're closing that. I think that's it. And now we have to go back to the here again. And now we're going to change these Change this guy. But these are soft references. Oh, that's handy. This is new in UE5, I think at the bottom here. I've never seen that. Is that in UE4? Am I crazy? That's super handy. OK, and then we have to async load these right here. That's fine. Could also cast here, but I don't like doing the cast thing. No one saw that. Just pretend you didn't see that. I don't. I don't know what happened. Um, so sinuskist, sin. I don't know. That's the best you can get out of me probably today. Do you. Do you mean like, can I not just make like one animation blueprint and then not have to make one for every single character? Um, Ryan, right now I'm just using the ones that I have kind of access to in like the generic sense. So I have like. A warrior, cavalry, a spearman, um, there's a priest and a mage. Um, An archer, knight, and then a mounted archer, a mounted like knight, things like that. I'm tempted. I'm kind of tempted to just like make it so instead of having like a mounted unit as like a separate unit, have like um, a stable that unlocks. And when you get a stable, then all your units are mounted. All the, the ones that make sense, so they just move faster. But I'm not really sure. I think it might be better just have mounted units. I think dwarves, I think blacksmiths and artificers. Yeah, and we could do like I've been thinking about that, too. The only reason I'm using dwarves is because that's what I had for the healing game, because I wanted to explore a, like a cavern. So it made sense. Um, we could just go buy the healer, the human units and swap them out. 
wouldn't be that big of a deal. And they're like, let's see how much they are, actually. Because <laughs> I don't remember now. But, um, sinus box. Sinus box, but in German. Okay, I'm going to go with sinus. Uh, RTS. I think I'll just search for RTS and I'll come up. New plan. Let's just switch to this. These guys, these guys, people will love it. They'll be like, oh, it's just like squished Swords of Magic characters. Perfect. I'm not going to lie. I've, I've considered like three or four times now switching to um, just using Swords of Magic assets, but I don't want to do it. I want a new style I want a new vibe. Um, they are eight dollars right now. Oh, my God. They're all 50 percent off right now. If we bought, if we bought the humans, oh, these are barbarians. If we bought the humans and the elves, there's, oh, these are elves and the orcs. There's not humans. There probably are. <laughs> then we could switch factions. You could like go through the campaign and then play as different factions. But then we would need new buildings to match the factions, which is where we run into problems. There is this cool dragon village, which would match like our barbarian probably. And that's five dollars right now. <sighs> you guys, why do they do this? Why do they have stupid sales? Cube heads equals the only heads. Human hold confirmed. <laughs> I'm just saying <clears throat> we don't. It doesn't have to be dwarf. Can I see all the packs by this polygon, dude. Sure. There, there's not as many as you think. That seems to be like almost all of them. So there's humans. Orcs, the undead one, which we already have, barbarians, elves, dwarves, and then this tiny one, which was free a long time ago, I think. And that's where I have all the, the buildings from. I really wish this guy would launch or would release a bunch of building sets because I well, would 100% have bought those. Um, but I think I can make the buildings myself. If there's a, if I have to do a little bit of art or if I use them as can get can do it, then great. He's offered to do it for free because he just wants his name in the credits. And where I'm at right now financially, I I normally would argue and be like, no, I'm going to pay you. But right now I'm like, if you really want to, <laughs> I guess. And I also told him that as soon as the game launches, like once it's out there and I'm at marketing is done everything, then um, he has to put them on the marketplace for sale. That he has to pack all these up so they can be sold. Um, he already said that he was going to do it if I didn't want the assets. So I told him, OK, I'll, I'll let you help if you promise me that you will package them all up and put them out there for sale so you can make money off the, the assets too after I'm done. So if you guys like the assets for this game, most of them are going to be for sale somewhere else for your own. Uh, and only one building set. I'm surprised. Yeah, I know the building set seems to be <clears throat> I bet they <clears throat> the building set has the most reviews, but I think they got it. I think they put it out for free at one point. Like, I'm almost positive I got it for free because Ryathmus had it, too, because I, I was like search for this because he wanted to see the buildings closer because I didn't I didn't want to send them to him. Um, so he he looked it up and he had he owned it too so I'm pretty sure you got it for free on the marketplace by the way Ryan if you're not already doing this and you do want to switch to Unreal Engine one day you should go and sign up for Epic and then go to the marketplace oh right here and go to free and do free for the month and get all the free assets because these are free for only the month and then you, they're gone like there's a survivor's roguelike like game like template <laughs> it's just there you go you, there's your vampire survivors game it's free just grab this and then make a project out of it and then go replace the art and you have your own vampire survivors game it's done <laughs> you, know how many, you know how many of these we're gonna see right now we're gonna see so many of these right now Uh, anyway, so you should start doing this, start building up your, your asset collection, because I've been doing this for years and I have all of these. All of these and they make like. I can just like I swear I want to do a game jam where it's just like. Free asset jam where you just scroll through your free assets and pick like you can only use like the only thing you can use is like stuff from your asset jam base or the asset. The, the, from the assets um i don't know that's not a good game jam game but um i don't know i just feel like i can scroll, I can scroll through here and like find a couple characters or, or a couple um 
assets and just be like, cool, I'm making an entire game based on this. <laughs> it's just so easy. Speaking of this, um, there is a like some portals, I think. I don't know if I bought them or if I got them for free, but I want to use them for our. Oh, this is not what I was. That's not what it was. Let's just look at uh, VFX. Advanced magic. We could we could grab some of that because it looks kind of low poly, I think. <laughs> Elements, stylized starter pack. There's one in here that has portals in it, like, you know, like a portal effect. And I just I'm just going to use that for our like spawner portals, I think. Like I'll obviously do a model around it, but there's a hack and slash effects and we'll grab that for our attacks, maybe. Yeah, it just seems silly not to use this stuff. You know what I mean? Like people are not going to recognize most of these things, like unless you're a developer who's like actively like like using these assets as well in like prototyping and stuff, they're not you're not going to recognize this stuff, this kind of stuff in a game. So like, why would you spend a whole bunch of time like building your own things unless you're making like a like Swords and Magic is a, a, a bit of a different game, right? Because it's a it's a really big game, huge commercial game in for me for like as an indie goes like a small indie goes. Uh, it's a really big commercial game and I understand using custom assets for that because it's like it's it's a huge experience. But if you're making like a smaller game and like this helps you this saves you some time, I just don't see why you wouldn't do like use this stuff. Seems silly not to. Do you recommend to have a separate account from your gaming account on Epic? Uh, nah, it doesn't really matter. You can if you want. I have a bunch of stuff in my like actual library on Epic too, so like I have a bunch of games in here too. Because there's like they do a bunch of free games and stuff too. Um, so yeah, I have Unreal Editor and Fortnite installed. I think that's it. And I don't play either of them. I don't even like I don't I really don't like the editor for Fortnite. Um, anyway, I, just, I have a bunch of games in here I've not even played yet. That I really should go play. Anyway, um, guys, I'm really tempted with those those RTS packs. What do you guys think? And new free assets are announced every first Tuesday of the month. Yep, Angel is really good actually at posting about them, by the way, Ryan, in the um, make a game where you collect free assets. <laughs> um, right. Uh, Angel's really good at posting with those in the, our game dev channel. So keep an eye out. You'll see when they when they come out and then uh, you can pick them up. Like here's a vampire building set. Five dollars. I don't like the, the bats, but we could remove those pretty easy. <laughs> also, they don't really have like, so here's a bit of a like one problem we run into is that if we start buying the buildings from other places is we're not going to have the same sort of like spawners, which means we won't have like one to one units, which is probably a good thing. It'll, it'll probably be more fun if like different factions were asymmetrical. Um, if you if we even wanted to like do that. I bet you this guy has more. Is his name really low poly? Nope. What did I go back? Go back. Thank you. Uh, Where's his like. You can normally just like click on the developer right here, can't you? Or the, the artist? <laughs> I guess not here. Anyway, I don't know, guys. I'm really tempted to buy these. Like if we did like, I don't know if I don't know if orcs would be like playable, because the thing is, if they're not playable, we only need one real building, right? Because they don't need a whole kingdom. They could just have like one building with a wall around it. So you only need to make like a wall and like a keep. That's all you have to make for the enemies. It would be cool if you could see inside there and see like the buildings they built. So, you know, like what's coming up next, but it's really not important. Ryan's correct. Start with the two races you have, then buy the packs later when you're done making the base game. $15 versus $8 is not a big difference in the long run. Yeah, but if I buy all of them, I can get one, two, three. I think it was four. I think it was another, another one, too. A human one, too. <laughs> and during the Black Friday sale, everything is 50 to 70% off. 30, 30, 50 or 70, I think. And I, I did all mine at 52, so I think most people did 50. So that's one, two, three, four. 
So I get four packs for the price of two right now. Marketing professional marketing professionals love this man's mindset. <laughs> I'm saving $15. That's $15 that I don't have to spend. Let's go, let's see if there's other buildings for sale. So these are 70% off. These are $5 right now. These are pretty cool. I don't, I don't know. Hey, these might be too listen. low poly though. <laughs> I guess they'll, they probably match the style pretty well. They probably match the characters I already have pretty well, to be honest. This would be neat if you played like a different faction, but like, I don't think this guy has, I can't even click on it. I don't know why I can't click on his thing. Like the, the other guy, when I just click on his, his thing, it shows up. Um, here's RTS buildings. What do these look like? Oh, these are too detailed. These are cool though. If you're making like an actual RTS game, not like a not like a baby's first RTS game. Oh snap, free money. Say thank you. What? Say thank you to what? To who? Oh! Kimmy can thank you. I don't know how I'd missed that. Buy the packs. Oh no. Oh no, look what you've done. Oh, by the way, uh thank you for thank you so much for the $15. Seriously, thank you. Um, I need to start, I need to hear the notifications better. So I think I turned them down. Oh, now I've turned them off. Um, because I think that someone was saying they're too loud and now I don't hear them. Do you guys hear them? I don't see them at all anymore. I don't even see like audio thing. I guess it's whatever. Just you guys have to just ping me, I guess. Oh, two days ago, right? You tipped $5. That's who it was. So yeah. Okay. So. That's our that's our stream fund too, technically. But you donated for the for the assets. <laughs> okay, we have to buy them now. Oh no, darn it. Shoot. Now we have now we have to buy these these characters. Oh, I'm still going to only make the game right now for the two factions we already have in, just because that's how we already have it built. But yeah, um, so the reason we even got into this is because Matt was saying that dwarves like these don't it doesn't really feel like dwarves because dwarves would be like, you know, I don't know, there's this one too. This one's not on sale though, so we're not buying this one today. Uh, this one actually looks pretty good too though. I like that they have like the things on top of them, but I don't know. Oh yeah, and it's got a lot of stuff. Oh, it's got, it's got like resource nodes and everything too. This would be a, a good buy. Um, it doesn't like match all the other style, all the other characters, but that's like whatever. Who cares? We can we can work on that later. They do have colors though. Look, multiplayer. Anyway, okay, let's not do that. Let's we're gonna buy the characters. Thank you. I'll do it over here on this other screen. Dan is like, why are we doing this? I don't know when the sale ends, so I don't. I, I just want to get them all. They're still on sale, and if nothing else, then you know, we'll use them. I'm sure we'll use them. <laughs> if if nothing else, it would be fun to make them other enemies in the campaign, even if they're not units you can spawn. But it, it will be really it, honestly the the system's already built so easily for this. He's hiding his screen so he can use your money to buy chicken tenders. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Yes, that's exactly what's going on. Um, I'm opening them in new tab. Oh, actually, why am I doing that? Hold on. I know what I'm doing. I have an add to cart button. All right, four character packs for the price. Some of these, one of these is $10 because it's $20 normally. 
I wonder why. We should, um... No, we shouldn't. It would be cool if you could change the color of your... your units. But completely unnecessary. And only- it would only really work with one of them. <laughs> How does my- my brain told me that this was gonna cost $15. But we're actually saving $32 but have to spend $32. <laughs> I spent I spent more money on dumber things. This is fine. Thank you so much for the donation. Again. I did suggest to ask Jana first. If you spend the money, you need to publish the game. I'm yeah, I have to, I'm this is 100% gonna be published. I've already, it's yesterday, when I was streaming the other day, it like clicked for me that I was going to be. Uh oh. This is, uh, they are, they're, this is definitely going to be the next game that will be published. All? We did it. We own all of them now. Oh, there's an update for the Tiny Toon RTS set. I wonder what the update is. Did they add more things? There's no way to know. They don't, as far as I know, they don't put the updates on here. Okay, should we put the human ones in? Should we put any of them in yet right now or should we just wait? We can't call this game Dwarven Hold now. <laughs> if we put other unit, if we can be other races. But you know what? This this kind of opens a lot of feature creep. Which we're not doing yet, but it is things. What's what's the matter, Jana? What's what's why are you upset that I spent thirty dollars? Um he has no choice. He has no choice but to release the game. Yeah, it's, it's going to be released, I promise. I promise you, we're releasing this game. Does it have an official name? It was, I don't know, there's not really an official name yet, but I'm, I'm leaning, I was leaning toward Dwarven Hold because I think that'd be cool, but it doesn't, there's no, if we, if we unlock new factions, we can't really call it Dwarven Hold. I'm not upset, she says. See, my wife trusts me. Have you done the Steam thing that requires spending money? Not yet. Should we do it? Should we put that as our new Steam goal? Stream, or let's do that as Steam goal. Stream, it's our stream Steam goal. We. This is how we did Swords of Magic, by the way. You guys actually paid for it, for Swords of Magic too. This is how we paid for the first, for the hundred dollars to put Swords of Magic on the the Steam store. And the th I think, honestly, that was like a big reason why the game actually launched is because like the community was like, yes, we want to see this game come out. We want to play this game, so we will pay for it, right? That was supposed to be the money for the YouTube thing, but that's whatever. It's I guess we'll stream for YouTube again next. Oh my God, you know what? I am so dumb. I forgot to open the YouTube chat. There's probably like... I mean, we have four people on YouTube. There were probably more, and then I ignored all of them for the last hour and 40 minutes. I'm so bad at this YouTube streaming thing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm opening it now. Oh my god, so much chat I missed. Okay, not, not so much. Like, six things. Uh, Bendo says, yo, Omega Killer says, so the game will only have dwarves. <laughs> the answer was going to be a yes. Now the answer is probably not. Uh, Phil Zan says, Shadow King, don't you mean Demon King? Uh, is Siege of the Demon King a thing? Doing another Kickstarter not an option? Uh, we could do another Kickstarter, not for Swords of Magic, though. Um, that would not look very good, I don't think. We could do a Kickstarter for this game, but I don't think we'd... The game will be done by the time the Kickstarter is like gets ready to be done and then launches and, and releases and finishes. 
this game will be finished by like the end of next month. I'm pretty confident that it's going to be finished by the end of next month. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick turnaround for this game. My goal was three months and I think we'll have it marketed and, and released in three months easy. Uh, how about rally points with a bunch of my units uh, to gather at a certain place along the line? That would be kind of cool, actually. That would be a real that would actually be a really good idea. But also then we have to worry about um, like avoidance and stuff, and that's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, I saw when you go near rocks, there was a small pop up interaction button. Is that built using UMG? Yes, it is. I'm a killer if you're still in here. Man, you guys, I'm so sorry. If you're in YouTube chat and you have been trying to talk to me and I completely ignored you like Nick Bell. Hi, I am so sorry. I so I have to open YouTube chat separately when I stream, but my Twitch chat, it pops open as soon as I hit go live. And so that's yeah. What's up, Arithmus? I just saw you. I just got saw how to ping from you. It was just. Yeah. Next month is tomorrow. By the end of next month, I know that. <laughs> Epic fail. Just rip YouTube anyway, bro. There was like one viewer forever. Yeah, we have eight viewers right now. It's not that I don't appreciate the eight viewers. It's just that like Twitch, we have 41. Like, I just feel like. The only reason that the only reason I want to keep doing the YouTube thing is because I felt like it was going to grow my YouTube channel. Like we we're going to get more subscribers on YouTube, but I'm still having I still get negative every week. Hey, GoFace, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in. How was your stream? I'm sorry for calling you GoFace. That was pretty rude. It'll be done by end of day. Uh, I think let's if we sit down to focus, it's only noon right now. Plenty of time. If I focus right now, um, I'm pretty sure we can get the game playable today. Like not balanced playable. That's the preferred name. <laughs> I'm just I'm just teasing. I know. Um, I'm totally just teasing. It just sounds like an insult. Like if I called someone goat face, that would be like, yo, at face. No, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think I didn't see it that way. So that would have been pretty funny if it was actually called, if it was actually go at face, but like a facial clawing attack. Um, there's a free plugin for OBS that combined them for you into a doc. Oh, I don't use OBS. Unfortunately, I wish I did. I should. I switched from OBS when Streamlabs was like, look how convenient this is. We have chat built in and we have all this stuff and you can just like, yeah, you know, all this stuff is so convenient. So I switched to it and then now it's like, I wish I would have just stuck with OBS. <laughs> the gameplay will consist of a castle and three white lines weaving around a sparse set of trees. Uh, Ryan, I think I think we'll be doing level design next week and we'll be cleaning up and probably doing extra art and stuff. Anything that Rayathmus doesn't um, have for us. Yeah, it's I, I forget too, Angel. It's fine. It's weird. It's weird. Um, Rayathmus, when you're streaming and I see you're live and I right click on Discord to watch your stream, which is like usually how I find people to watch on stream. It takes me to YouTube instead of Twitch. Uh, I don't know if your Twitch is linked. Um, but I hope mine does not take me to YouTube because that's annoying. Super easy to use and dock. What a game to make, so OBS will have to play later. Yeah. Uh, it went well remaking my 2D Godot game in real Unreal. Oh, nice. Yeah, good luck with 2D and Unreal. Um, it's definitely doable, but it's definitely a challenge too. But that's awesome. Jana, hey Jana, while you're watching, do you remember Jonas Tyroller playing our game? Do you remember him playing Swords of Magic? I forgot he did that. Um, but I messaged him yesterday on Twitter and he messaged me back. And he was like, I'm, I'm aware of your content because I played your game on stream or on on, uh, in, in a, on video. And I was like, I don't remember that. You don't see? I don't know. I wonder if we missed it. I don't think so. I think I would we would have seen it, right? Someone would have told us and I would have watched it. I don't know. I want to watch it again. It's the old tutorial though. It's the the ship tutorial. Not the not the not inside the ship, the ship crash, the shipwreck tutorial. 
a year ago. It says one year ago on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know the date. Okay, we're getting combat working. Um, oh, we need to refactor. All right, I forgot we were doing. I see. I got off track because we had to. Well, we had to restart the engine because we crashed. Because I was compiling the thing. Okay. Uh, where were we then? We were right here, and these are all broken. Oh, right. Why is this erroring? Okay, it's not. Idle is in combat. This one is in run. We have to async load these first. I don't know if we can async load back to back and then do it, so I'm not going to try. This is, this is ugly, but it doesn't matter. Okay, compile. Okay, we didn't crash one time. All right, now, now let's go put in some default animations in here, and then that way we can, like, we'll just do it for base characters, because we're going to have more of those than, than mounted ones. Um get locomotion animations and we'll just we can just pick here which this is this is nice but i don't know if this is the way i want to do this i think we just oh no we build this into the struct never mind we do need never mind we only do this once i forgot i forgot we did this there's our faction at the top again that's nice uh idle goes into idle running goes into run i'm glad i've kept i've kept my naming consistent i've called it idle in here and then combat and the other one and then run and running I'm doing a good job there. Okay, so now we just have to go back to our units and we go to footman and we grab idle. Um, this isn't gonna be annoying because these are like hard to find, but let's just do idle. That's fine. And then run is gonna be run. Archer's probably fine. Actually, let's do idle combat. I think there's an idle combat one that'll work better. And we can swap this for the archer when we set up an archer, well, whatever. I'm just using kind of default ones for now. Let's just do infantry. That's fine. Great. So let's not do archer then. Let's do idle infantry. Oh no, run infantry, my bad. Perfect. And then we need the same thing here. Shift right mouse button and then shift left left mouse button. I keep forgetting this is I think this is a new thing in Unreal Engine, isn't it? The left right mouse button copy paste thing. So cool. You convinced me I'll get to work again. <laughs> Take your time. You don't have to work right now. Wait, what did you how did you just raid me? You weren't streaming, were you? There's no way you were still streaming. Sort of a sequel slash remake. That's cool. Goface, what's your game about? Do you want to give a link? Do you, you want to share a link? You can. Kendra getting off track. I think, we, I think Lewis told us. Yeah, probably. Looks like Soupy shared that video with us. Yeah, that sounds right, too. What's up, Arrow? Welcome in. Arrow, um, I'm impressed by your work on your uh, dungeon. Hold on. Dungeon Delve? That was called? Did I get it right? Call hating. This looks cool. Here, I can show it on stream. You notice how I did not click the, the video? I didn't watch the trailer. I just skipped right through to start looking at screenshots. Let that be a lesson to you, game devs out there. The trailer is like, I feel I think what's happened with Steam lately is people are so used to like such quick 
angst that they don't want to wait for the trailer to load um and they don't want to like invest in it so if the game doesn't immediately hook them by just like clicking to the screenshots or if you um scroll down well, i don't know, I mean to close it if you scroll down and see like there's no gifts or whatever in the about this game section which um i don't i don't know if there's enough like stuff to make gifts in your game but um swords magic definitely needs some gifts in there but I'm pretty sure if people just scroll down and don't see enough like information about the game right away, but it's just like super easily digestible, then they're not going to buy it. Anyway, yeah, so I'm I'm evidence of that right there. OK, Undead Warrior, we need uh, or yeah, Undead Warrior. This is going to be what are these guys called? They don't have names. That's the problem. It's like none of the none of these guys have um, names for the. Thing so infantry idol. Uh, it's this guy, so we sh no, it doesn't matter. We can't call this thing. Okay, and then run to be infantry run. I don't know if that's the right guy. It is. Okay, good. And then undead rider is going to be cavalry, I think. Idle. Okay, should we test it and see if our game's working? I think it's gonna be broken. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be broken because I think we only did it. Oh, these guys are working. Oh, right, because they're still using the blend space. So we need to swap that out still. Come on, horsey guy. Let's see if horsey guy on this sword starts working. Hey, he's working. I think, I think, oh no, we didn't switch the, uh, those are still using the old one too. We need to see if, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. Okay. Go back in here. So when I stream a lot or when I'm working a lot and I've been working a lot apparently lately, um, my elbow starts like, like right here. starts getting like, I think it's like bruised hey, from my, listen. cause I put my elbow right here a lot and lean on it, um, for my stupid armrest hey, and this thing's like seen better days. So it's like pretty hard now. Um, oh, never finished my food. <laughs> anyway, my elbow's sore. $100. Oh, need, hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, dark goal, steam page. This is exciting. I'm actually, I'm actually incredibly excited about this. I don't think you guys know. Added the in the blighted land after the, the stram. Nice. Those are all edited, outdated. Yeah. I need to redo all the screenshots. Hey Arrow, um, I didn't. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not gonna give unsolicited advice. I already did to go face games on accident, so I I will I'll stop there. If you want feedback, um, you can ask me. I have opinions on your your UI design. Just redid our screenshots, but I haven't changed them out yet. Yeah, we need to get on that. Same thing happens with your elbow. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's only my left one because my right one's like always up because it's doing stuff. Um, but it's yeah, it's it's super sore. I sometimes like will put like a blanket or a sweatshirt or like a pillow or something there so like stop it. But yeah, I need like I need to like just make a chair for like right-handed people who rest on their elbows that just have like a super like memory foam or something there, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this needs to be set to loop. Loop animation. Compile. Save. All right. So now we just need to copy the same deal. I don't I wish there was this is weird that they have they let you like expose this, but you can't just do like a generic thing here. I guess it doesn't matter, though. OK, let's copy that. Let's go uh, and BP skeleton. Yoink. This is a better setup. I like this better. This gives us a lot more. Um, can we just promote all these? Nope. Okay, 
And then we go back to here and go event graph and we copy all the event graph stuff. Yoink and delete this and this and paste all this. And now should that should that should be it. Now it should be working. Right? I think I don't know why he's not working here. I think because he's no, he's not working here either. Though. That's why, though. OK, let's test and see if he's working and then we'll move over and do the dwarf one and then we should be good to go. And then if we do the new races, yeah, they're working. So now they should stop when they run into other guys. Slow-mo is the absolute best. I love they're just like charging each other. It feels epic. Yeah, they're stopping now. Perfect. Okay, cool. So, all right, so let's 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 refactor the dwarf uh, blueprint stuff, and then we will then we'll dive into actually making animation montages and setting up actual combat, and then we should be like ninety percent there to having like a playable like demo. That's the goal today. We're today we're getting a playable demo, and we're going to gather some testers and send out testers. Jana, how do you want to handle testers for this game? I think our current dedicated testing team will will test it for us, but I wonder if we should have a different testing team for this, like a different channel for it. Just so we're not muddying the waters. I'll let you and Matt decide how we do that. How's that sound? Oh, Lord, I said stram instead of stream. Clearly, I'm still waking up. I, th I thought you did not purpose. Some like people say like strum instead of stream. I thought you were doing on purpose. Anyway, uh, I'm very open to feedback. My current UI is still basically just placeholder. Okay, cool. Then I'm not even gonna give you feedback then. Um, it was just the like the and never mind. I'm not no, I don't want to do it. Maybe I'll give you feedback. <sighs> Wait, I'm sorry. Hang on. I'm going to the game dev chat so I can pull it up. The the big the big thing that I wanted to point out was Where is it? I'm just making sure I can show this. This. Okay, so when this pops up, I, this is probably what you're talking about with the like, placeholder. Love the animation, um, but this like solid black here really like pops strange against the like not outlined, not solid black um, anywhere like um, environment art. So I try to avoid solid black outlines and because you have a solid black outline here and here, make sure these outline thicknesses are the same in both places. It'll just it'll make the art feel a little more cohesive. Um, there's definitely times when you want to do like thinner outlines in like interior stuff. But yeah, and here I think they should have the same thickness of outlines. And then if I were you, I would try. Um, maybe not like solid black. Um, but yeah, I love the animation, though. It's great. Other than that, that's I was like that was it, and that's probably like the placeholder you were already talking about, so it probably doesn't matter. Okay, getting back to work now. I've completely entirely killed YouTube chat now. No one has chatted since I even realized that I hadn't didn't have it open. Uh and a new Trello. I already have a new Trello working. We're going. New Trello. Look, here it is. I did not pick the background. This is just what it gave me. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, new Trello already. Look how empty it is. Isn't it nice? Um, enemy spawning. That is in the needs polish, but complete. Um, portal unit menu. This still is not done. Because of I'm um, queuing. Hold unit production. Still not done. Uh, harvesting sometimes leaves a full progress bar. I think this is fixed, but I'm not sure. We'll need testing. 
Uh, AI combat, almost. None of this stuff is even close to done. I mean, started it. So yeah, we're gonna get AI, con AI combat done and castle damage done today, and then we are pretty much ready for a test play. Um, it's just gonna be very lackluster right now. Okay, what are we doing? We need to save this, save this. Uh, we're gonna open up animation blueprints for the dwarf. My bad. Okay. Compile, and then we open up this one for the dwarf and do the same thing in here. It's kind of nice not having to get speed all the time, and I kind of wish we were... I kind of wish we could just bind, but I run into, like, this annoying, like, wall that I've never really, like, realized before until this project for some reason. Like, I think I've run into it before, too, but, like, never really, like, worried about it. So... We have this, right? And this is this is updating every frame. We're checking every frame to see if this is in combat. And this is kind of unnecessary because we really only need to do this when it happens, right? We don't need to keep calling this every single frame and checking to see if we're still in combat. We could do like a bind or, but I don't know. I don't know if, if like binding to like dispatcher is even cheaper because that might also just be checking every frame to see if that's called, you know? I don't know. But it would be better if when you got into combat, we just told the animation blueprint, hey, we're in combat now. Damn it. Just realize that it's really easy to do that because we we can just put. We can just put this um, interface on it. We just put an animation interface on it and then we can just call that and be like, hey, we're in combat now. Uh, and then we don't have to do this every frame. And this might be... I don't know how much cheaper it'll be. But then we don't have to do this for every single unit, every single frame. And I'm just... I'm I'm worried about things like that. Let's do this. Let's put... There's our there's our note there. One day we'll refactor that. I don't know how much performance it'll save, but I figure if we have like 70, 80 units on the screen, it might be worth it. Wish listed, heck yeah. Oh, arrow, uh, link it. Link your game in chat while we're talking about it. I like the idea of different testing of a different testing team, mostly because I'm not a tester for SM. And you want to test this, Angel? That's fair. Yeah, that's another thing, too, is like this is probably going to have a totally different audience, so I'm fine with that. And some of our testers for Swords of Magic might not be into this game, and that's fine. What are you linking me? What's this? Ooh. All right, so this this is some of the art that Rayathmus is doing. I like it. I still think the trees need to be painted, though. And I do like the ore, but I think it could... It, could probably use some detail in painting, some painting detail too, just to match the rest of the art, since we're going for more of a like heavy hand painted look. But yeah, I like it. I still think the the grass might be too much, like all the grass. It maybe like in clusters, like Pokemon style, like here's a cluster of grass, here's a cluster of grass. We do that in Swords of Magic, and I think that feels a little like it's still like you still have grass, but it's not so overwhelming, and it's not just kind of like blending together, especially from top down. Because we're gonna be looking at it from such a high angle, like I think it, you're just gonna see like a lot of like cards sticking up. So unless we like lay those cards down to like 45, to 45, right, and like billboard them, I guess maybe that could work. Um, I don't know. Honestly, we could probably just use like a billboard card for the grass. And that might be even. I mean, it's probably not as cheap as like doing like actual mesh, but it'd probably be fine. Okay, um, these should be working. We just need to copy the locomotion now. So where's... 
this thing. Honestly, like, no, I guess we need this. We need this slot. It's kind of insane. I bet you that this still works, even though it's like, yeah, because it just, it just swaps the thing out. Of course, it still works. Uh, how did I lose? Where did I, where did I lose our? There we go. Alright, that guy's working. These guys seem to be working. Uh oh. Oh god. <laughs> That's th this guy's supposed to be mounted. He's supposed to have a horse. That is cursed. What? Okay, let's fix that because that's horrifying. Uh, it's probably this right here that can't have cavalry. It probably just needs just whatever it doesn't even matter what it is probably it just needs to be something that's not that and then we expose this as a pin and this goes in here and this goes in here we probably need the same thing for the other one too let's see if that works first nope still broken oh wait very broken. What's happening? Did I just that backward? Is that why? Now these guys are super broken too. What did I do? Character dwarf, archer run. We set up their animations. What what did we just do? How did we break this? You went, you only slept for four hours, right you? Oh. Wait, you wouldn't show the URL. What URL? The, the trail is private. You have to be invited to it. Uh, just took just 20 minutes of work after stream, so I will focus on making that better when I go home. Yeah, no, no problem, man. No rush. You can make those dead trees and get the textures on bigger ones. Cool. Don't have access to the trailer board? Yeah, I know. It's a secret. Secret pillow board. You want access to it, Jana? Um, um, Jana. Who else? Probably Red. Matt. Anyone else who... Oob, do you want access? I'm just giving testers that we currently have access in case they want to test it. <laughs> if anybody else wants access, I guess we'll have to make a tester board. This is more of a development board, but that's okay. That's fine. Okay, well, we've broken the animation or the anim stuff. That's fun. Um, Which... I guess this is this can't be grabbed because it's not loaded. Um, I assume. So what's wrong here? This looks right. Oh, 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 oh! I know it's not. I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know what's wrong. The units have their things in here, right? Hey, listen. They have animations. Oh, I don't even have a. The knight is using. Sorry, I'm, I'm listening. I literally heard the the listen here, and then I heard it again downstairs in the TV, and then that's what that's what got my attention. Oh, Phil, I also hi, uh, hi Phil, um, on YouTube. I'm sorry, I've been ignoring YouTube forever. I'm trying to keep up on that. Are you good at 2D animation or 2D graphics in general? No. 
Uh, I can make icons, um, and I can draw a little bit. I'll take boolean checks are cheap, no need to do it. Okay. Can you explain your ABP's soft referencing? I have never worked with that, and I'd like I'd be interested to know. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain it in a second. Hang on. And what's up, Mason? Uh, may I ask whether the people like AimDev TV contact you about the course or whether you applied to their affiliate program? Uh, yeah, Sinus. So I'm actually good friends with um, um. <laughs> Why am I just suddenly lost his name? With Tim, Tim Ruswick, who uh, works there. Uh, and he actually put me in contact with, um, I know his name too, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'm not good friends with him, so that's, it makes more sense that I've forgotten his name suddenly. Uh, the other guy that like owns it. Um, oh, why can't I think of his name now? Really nice guy. He did a bunch of YouTube videos, um, and he does like, he's like the leader. Rick. Um, yeah, so... I think I was talking to him and he mentioned it and I was like, oh, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd like to do that. And then he was like, oh, neat. So, yeah, I would reach out to them if you're interested. Oh, applied to their affiliate program. Um, right. I don't know. I got in the affiliate program because I did a course for them. So they gave me affiliate status, though. I need to push it more because I do feel like it's a really good resource and I need to be pushing this, that more to make sales. Um, I don't know if I've ever made any money off it, actually. I should go check. I might have $500 sitting in there. Who knows? I don't even know how to check, actually. I assume... I don't even... I have no idea how to check. I think I just get automatically paid out. Should reach out and ask. Behind on chat again. Uh, yeah, I don't sleep that much. That's why I'm, I'm perfect for game jams. Yeah, same. I was up till 3 and got up at 9-ish, 8.30-ish, and uh, was to work by, like, 10. I did get a shower in this morning and I cleaned up the front area that Jan has been complaining that our um, our entryway has been a huge mess. So I cleaned that and then I did some dishes. Um, so I did get some work done around the house. I was going to paint Abby's room. We need a second coat, but I didn't want to waste an hour doing that. So I decided to get to work. Uh, I'm in. Angel raises hand. Okay. Um, you'll have to remind me in Discord later. I'm not going to add anyone's like emails right now. The last Ludum Dare I did. 30, 40. Oh, that's too much. Missing chat questions here and on YouTube. I'm I'm catching them. Thank you. Appreciate waking up to a clean area. Yeah, I figured you did. I left the the box out because it's due outside outside decorations still. We need to do that tomorrow. This man just trying to work and chat enjoys him so much they keep him double busy. Yeah, no kidding. Rick, yes, thank you, Linus. That that's right. Uh, Game Dev TV courses are great. Yeah, I just did a short one. I actually want to work with them again. Um, at the time, I was really not into making courses um, like I wanted to try it, but I was just it wasn't really like what I wanted to do. And it was like the course I was doing was cool, but it was like kind of like short notice and like it didn't have like a huge plan. Um, I don't know. It was it felt a little weird, like a little rushed when I did it. And so I just wasn't really enjoying it. And the way we were doing it was very much like live, which I'm good at. I'm good at live. Obviously, I'm this is kind of what I do. But I don't know. It was kind of the the, the course I have is a on, on UE5 uh, level design, and we use like mega scans and uh, Lumen and Nanite and all that stuff. And it was just kind of like I don't know. It was kind of weird. I don't really like the result. And then they wanted me to go fix some stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll get around to it." And I never did. And now I feel I feel like I've burnt a bridge there. I messed up. Um, I just ran out of time, and then I didn't have access to the stuff. I don't remember. I don't remember why. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, I would suggest it. Can you explain your APPs? Yes. Okay, so soft object references, very important. So my, um, I'll pull it up. The struct. My struct unit has a couple soft references. So it has a talk, attack montages, uh, this unit icon, idle animation, and run animation, right? Um, these are all soft references. So... In a nutshell, how it works is if you don't use soft references, like all the things in here are not like loaded. Oh, even like um, my class right here, my like actual like class class is um doesn't have anything in here right now, but um it's also a soft reference. So the reason you do that is because when this so the first time I accessed this data table, 
like the first time this gets loaded up and someone like asks for information, if these are not soft references, it goes through the entire data table right here, every single one of these and loads every single one of these hard references. So because they're soft references, they don't get loaded. They just get ignored at then. And then when I actually pull them up, I have to then load them myself. So the animation blueprint here, right here. So it basically gets those animations pushed through a soft reference. I have to async load them. And when it's done loading, then I have a complete tag or complete node. And I just go off that complete node. So all I have to do, the only difference is every time I have a soft reference, I have to do this load, which takes a little bit extra work, but that's literally it. That's all I have to do. You can also do what's called a blocking load. So load asset blocking. And this, what this does is it basically it'll load instantly, but it'll prioritize it. So it won't like wait till it loads. It'll like put this above everything else and load it instantly. Um, but it could, it could hang your game. So if it's like a big thing you're loading, it, it'll like freeze your game for a second while it loads it. So I suggest async loading. That'll do it in the background. And then when it's ready, it'll move on. And this is usually instantaneous anyway, like, and because this is happening at initialization when the when the actor's loaded, it's it's class is also being being or doing that. So, for example, let's look at the enemy spawner. I made a totally different class for enemy spawner because it works totally different than the other spawner, and I want to use the same thing. Um, this also async loads. So I have a spawn unit here. Um, it gets the data table row for that unit, and then it finds. I can hide these things. It finds the class, async loads that class, complete, it gets it, gets it. I cast to it here because I want access to that exact class. I don't want to just grab the generic class here because um, I know this is going to be a unit because they're all units anyway. Um, and then it loads it. So basically this loads and then it spawns. So if it takes an extra one second to load this class because it's like a really big boss class or something, who cares because it's happening on the spawner anyway and they will even notice. So just be mindful of that, but that's yeah, because like otherwise when you load up the game, basically this data table is going to like load in immediately. And if I have like 500 units on there, let's say I have like 500 units. I have like um, we just bought a bunch of other assets. Let's say there's a bunch of orcs on there and a bunch of uh, undead and there's a whole bunch of elves and a bunch of, like let's say 500 units on there, right? A whole bunch of classes. If I load that up and I don't use soft object object references, then I'm immediately loading all of those classes into memory right away. And then I'm then I'm sitting there with like, I don't know, eight gigs of RAM just like used up, just like holding on to those classes. So if you use soft references, it doesn't load them until necessary. So if you play through the game for four hours and you never get to the orcs, for example, in the campaign, if that's how this is going to work, who knows, then none of those classes have to be loaded and you can save all that RAM, all that memory. So. Uh, do you mean your wife is currently in Japan? The exact opposite of what you said. <laughs> Um, anyway, so yeah, Phil, that's how that referencing things works, the uh, soft references. Uh, what's up, David? Uh, so I highly suggest looking into it. It's pretty important for longer term projects. There's definitely many games I've made that don't use any soft references at all. But when you're thinking of like a commercial project or like a longer term project like Swords of Magic and this game, um, you want to use them because it's like it's just a smart way to, to handle your stuff. So, yeah, it's um, it's one of those things that I didn't learn for a long time. And then when we learned it, it was just kind of like a wow, there's so much more involved in this than I thought there was. And it you like it's things you don't need to know to make games, but you need to know if you're going to make big games. Since you don't have a, a lot of units and stuff, isn't data assets better? Uh, I think data assets in general are better, but they're kind of a pain to set up and I didn't want to set them up. So I just use a data table. A data, the reason I like data tables is because then I have all of my units sitting right here and I can compare things like there's all their attack range. Who has the biggest attack range, right? I can like sort these. I can like this is why I like having them right here in a data table so I can sort by health and go, oh, wow, this guy's 200 health. That's way too much. What am I thinking? And I can quickly and easily balance these because it's all right here, like in a spreadsheet where with um with uh, data assets, I can't do that. I have to look at them individually and open them up manually. And it's just way more tedious to like change them. So yeah, so this is nice for units. I'm, I'm probably going to have like maybe 50 units total, you know? Hey, what's up, Vimlark? Welcome in, man. So yeah, I think that it's just going to be cleaner that way. Uh, anyway, let's figure out what the heck's wrong with these guys. So all this should be working. I wonder if I've... They're all just, they're all inherited from pawn units. So like, 
that's kind of the nice thing about this is that all this should just work. This unit in combat should just work. Lo locomotion items should work. All their all their all their data tables are set up correctly. Oh wait, no, I think we hold on. I think we solved this, didn't we? Because the the problem was the knight. The knight is using this this right here, which is a mounted guy. So let's just fix that. Skeletal mesh. He's using the cavalry one, and he shouldn't be doing that because he's a knight is not cavalry. He's um uh heavy, I think. We're doing heavy infantry for him. Okay, that should fix that problem, I think. Let's try again. Okay, he's He's, okay, okay, okay. So now the problem is that we forgot to loop that one because we just swapped that out. I was wondering why that was broken too. So that's this one. And we swapped out this locomotion and I'm here, which means it got its loop turned off. Beautiful. Okay, now let's test again. Fight. Sick. Uh, and then there's our knight. Cool. We did it. We've got our little army of dwarves. We've got our army of undead. We are ready to do battle, I think. Okay. Uh, I would love it if there was a way to like not let them stack up and like on top of each other, but I don't know a way to do it. Um, one, one issue I did not take into account is this. And so like this game originates from the Cartoon Wars, which is a 2D game. And the characters are just kind of like stacked in like a on like the, the Y axis Z, I guess, whatever they're stacked in the Y axis. So like um, when they spawn, they just spawn in a random like Y in a range, I assume. And so when they like line up, it doesn't really matter that they stack up on each other because they're like, you know, you can see them all because it's a, it's a 2D plane and it makes sense. Like they kind of have to stack up and who cares? Right. But with this game, the problem is that they're going to stack up, but they're going to be like merged into each other. And I don't know how to fix that right now. Like, I guess we could do a thing where like. No, because like, I don't want them to wait. Like, I want them to all to be in combat at the same time, because you want like, you know, you want to be able to like stack up like five like units on top of each other to like fight at the same time. Maybe what we do. Does floating can floating pawn movement have RVO avoidance because we could turn that on and then what we could do is when they get into combat is we could like store their location like right when they hit combat so they know where to go back to after combat's over if they're still alive and then they'll that we could turn on their floating pawn movement give them an like a nav mesh tell them to walk to like have them navigate to the enemy and use RVO avoidance to have them like surround the enemy so they could like kind of like stack up and make a big ball of like combat and then they'll attack. The problem with that is that the movement like the like simple move to node or just like the AI move to nodes like require you to get in range. And I think the floating pawn movement won't allow you like it won't check for failure. It'll just keep trying if I remember correctly. And then so we'll have to do our own manual like failure check and like it's going to be kind of a pain. Because we'll have to like check distance, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. That sounds like a pain and it's probably going to huge like make a huge mess on the map. Might not be worth it. Maybe we just let them stack. We just who cares? Yeah, the I think the problem with the EQS is I don't know if we can do EQS without. Yeah, we can't do EQS without an animation. Uh, or a behavior tree, I mean, and I don't think we can use. Can we do EQS with just pawn floating pawn movement, though? Yeah, I guess so, huh? Probably. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. By the way, Ryu, here's the wheat, by the way. It's. From up here, it's very like, oh, yeah, that's wheat. Cool, right? Um, But if you look at it down here, obviously, this is like it looks terrible, right? Um, it almost looks like corn more than weed. So I, I'm 100% on board for replacing the wheat at least. And I like the trees because they're painted like this, you know, like I think they're fine from like the distance they're at. But at the same time, like. I'm, I much prefer the new trees. 
And then the rocks are very simple too, so. Anyway. Uh, let's see. I totally missed the last few. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, last few streams. And all I know is we started a new project. Can you give a brief TLDR? Yeah, David. Um, Basically, it's a lane-based real-time strategy game. So you collect resources, build buildings, which then unlock new units, and then you choose to spawn units on one of these lanes, whichever lanes you want. You can queue up. I think it's going to be like four units probably in a queue, maybe five, and spawn them all at the same time or like, right, like, you know, boom, 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 boom. Not like immediately same time. Um, so you can like kind of build like troops and then you send them out to battle and then the enemies will be spawning random resource or not random, but like waves sort of of enemies too and then they'll you'll meet somewhere in the middle and battle and if you can get your units to the castle over here the enemy castle then you can start dealing damage to it i like corn too it's fine got the juice um yeah and then the the only other like real feature that's like important is that you can also build uh or produce harvesters unit harvester units which will do like very minimal damage and have very low health but if they can get to the center here um, there's going to be resources and they'll leave the path and go harvest resources and be safe um, for a while. And when they get their resources, they'll go back to the path and walk out. So until unless they get within um, a combat range or something, they won't be attacked. So you'll want to like, OK, I'm going to do like a night or like you'll want to like escort them. Right. So you'll like build. Um, yeah, I think that'll just be like a lot of strategy there, like because you want your you want harvesters out there harvesting for you because they'll just come back and drop it off and then go again. But if you're not careful about like making sure you escort them, then they could get killed by the by the undead that are, that are walking through. Um, so how are the lines lanes determined? Can you ever change them or is it like levels? So currently it's just going to be one level. This is very, very boring right now, but eventually it's like the top lane is going to like go up into like a mountain kind of pass area. You should be able to see them pretty much not not anywhere on the map. Like, oh, you also have a little hero guy. Uh, hold on. Uh, there we go. You also have this little. Oh, he's broken, too. I forgot we broke his thing. Um, so you also have this hero guy and then you'll be able to see the lanes. But like run around between the lanes and see what's going on. So you can kind of, yeah, be in there. And then um, you'll also have abilities at the bottom so you can cast spells to like heal your allies or, you know, shoot a fireball at the enemies or whatever. Or um, someone suggested a rally point, which would be kind of cool. So you could like click and like rally at a point. And when the when the your guys see that point, they might like stop at it, I guess. I don't know how I feel about that yet because I don't really want players to just like stack up all their their allies together at one time. I like the idea that you can queue up to like five of them, but then like you have to keep like a stream of guys going. And that's kind of like the challenge. Um, Cause like one thing is like if you just send out like one warrior and he hits here and then like two like fighters or two like guys hit him or catch up to him, you know, they're probably going to kill him and you're going to be like, oh shoot, I got another, I need another guy out there right away. And that's kind of like the strategy of like, you have to be thinking ahead of like what might what I might run into. Like all four of these guys just spawned on the same lane. Like that's all random. So like they they wouldn't like you wouldn't know that was going to happen or not, you know? So like now you suddenly have to defend that lane. So if you just had like a whole bunch of like allies just rallied up here, just defending. It's just I don't know, I think that's going to be kind of lame. So I don't know if we're going to do that. Um, but yeah, um, there's a potential for new levels. Uh, the game was originally going to be called Dwarven Hold, or that's like the working title for it because you play dwarves and there's going to be a big mountain. But we just bought a bunch of the new assets. By the way, Ryu, if you're still in here. Um, uh, oh, no, Ryu, I wasn't showing you. I was sorry. I'm talking to David in a YouTube chat. I'm not trying to explain the game to you again over and over again, <laughs> if that's what you're. Um, or maybe I showed you, I don't know. I don't know what you're responding to. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, I just bought new assets on the, ar the marketplace because they're on sale right now and I just couldn't pass it up. Oh, whoop, they're right there. Um, go back. So, so we right now had the dwarves and the undead, but all the rest are on sale right now. So we just spent $30 and bought the rest of them. So I'm here working on the castle. Nice. I love using EQS, cache the results, and you can use it for many AIs. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. We could, I can think of, I, I don't think we're going to use it. I think it's just going to be too complicated. Um, right now I can have about 
Um, I've got to, I've got up to about a 750 AI on the screen before I getting down to like 20 frames per second. So if I don't think we'll ever have that many, we, we shouldn't have that many. And I'm planning on doing resource management to kind of lock players out of that. Currently, I think that like the AI are going to be or the units are going to be pretty cheap to produce. So uh, we might have to do a thing where it's like. All, for for all the units you have on the map at that time, at that time, you might be draining resources um, to like for like their upkeep or whatever. So you might pay like resources to spawn them and then they might still take resources as you go through. Maybe not. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But if, if we need to, like if, if players are able to spawn hundreds of, of units at a time and like it does become like performance problematic, um, there's a couple things we can do. One, we can do anim animation sharing, which I looked into and it's freaking pain in the ass to set up, but we can do it. Um, I'd rather not do it, but we can do it. Uh, so that would save us quite a bit, probably cut our like our performance in half as far as like units go. Um, Lots of games use food as a limiting factor to max units. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. And we could we could do like um, we could have like a. I don't know, maybe just like the keep, maybe the keep just has like a max unit thing. And so you can just upgrade the keep to like increase your max units. That could be a way to do it, too. So you just can't even spawn new units until some of the other ones die. That could be a really good way to do it. You should look into budgetal skeletal mesh component system uh, or budgeted. So I literally just turned on the animation budget. What is it called? It's a plugin. Um, and when you turn it on, it's supposed to just work. The problem is that I there's a there's also a debug like command you can use. And I tried it and it just doesn't do anything. So I don't know if it's like not working or if I have to turn it on somewhere else or enable it somewhere. I don't know. Um, but I just I just turned on the plugin yesterday because I was doing stuff or trying to do some project stuff and uh, it just didn't like do anything. So I don't even know if it's working and I couldn't see like the debug information or anything on it. So I don't I don't know. I don't have it in here at all either. Plugins installed. Uh, it's not installed. So it's animation. What's it called? Budget allocator. This one. So I just turned this on and it, what it's supposed to do is um, basically it'll like take all of your skeletal meshes on the screen and the ones that are closest to you, it'll give them it, like it'll like lock your frame rate basically within the CPU thread as far as, far as I understand it. Um, and then it'll like it'll like take all of like it'll like it'll budget it basically and then push the resources toward where they're needed. So if you only see like three animations on the screen at a time or skeletal meshes or whatever, then those three will get like the like they'll get like 80 percent of or 90 percent or whatever of the budget. And then if they you start adding more then the, the budget will spread out or whatever. I think that's how it's supposed to work. At least that's what the documentation kind of explains. But I don't see it doing anything. So I don't know if it's actually working. It said if as soon as you add the plugin and, and like restart your engine, it should just work. But I'm not seeing any difference. So I don't know. That's the one is really great system, but does require minimal setup a lot less than animation sharing. Yeah. How do you turn it on? Yeah, baseman, if you know how to turn it on, that'd be great because I the, the documentation said it just works. But I don't know how to, like, make it work. Um, the problem I have, the, the only problem I have with it is that. Uh, the problem I have with it is that you all of the units are pretty much at the same distance at all times. And so it's really hard to like decide like, well, who's going to, you know, like who's going to take priority because they're like all the same distance mostly. Um, but I suppose that won't always be the case. Um, and I'm trying to decide. I'm also trying to decide like how big I want the map to be, because like right now you can see on my screen, full screen, you can see both castles in the same screen. And uh, I am wondering if this should be like twice as big, you know, so you have to actually travel to see. I don't know. I haven't decided. So there's a lot. There's still a lot to figure out. Like housing of each empire. Yeah, exactly. So you've got to consider um, the order which you send your troops out. Yes, the order, which lane, etc. So, yeah. And like 
eventually we have we also have like siege weapons so we have like a, a ram right which is cool it's got like animations and everything so we can build our own like animation stuff out of that too um so we can build like a ram and then that'll be like an end game unit you can produce and then suddenly you've got like um like the ram will do like a ton of damage against the castle but it might but it might be like really weak to units so like units can just destroy it real quick like dismantle it or whatever so yeah so you'll want to like send out other units to clear the way first and then put out like a ram or two or whatever um or a battering ram so i, I don't know there's a lot of cool stuff we can do with this i think there's a lot of like strategy in it and a lot of replayability especially because i want to do like a skill tree kind of thing that like levels things up um another idea is I think we're, we're going to do this where like you build the barracks, right? And that unlocks the footman in the night. Uh, and then once you've done that, then you can upgrade it. And when you upgrade the barracks, then you unlock or then you get to pick like an upgrade for your people. So like it'll be like, oh, it was it was just basic footman at night. But now I can add like 10 percent movement speed to my footman or whatever. So he's faster um, or like 10 percent more armor to my knight or whatever. So you can take more hits or health, or whatever. So things like that. So I think there's a lot of like potential for like lots of in-depth strategy. And um, there's also um, some permanent progression through your character where you'll like level up your character through sessions. So you can like unlock new skills and everything that you'll have in like future sessions, which I think will be fun. Hey, or, you know, listen. maybe this will just be more fun as like a per, like you just play a session and like everything take like lives in that session. Um, prevents having to do like a lot of save stuff unless the sessions are kind of long then we would want to save that session uh, I don't know we'll see there's so much stuff to do yeah I think I already read this documentation base man you can override oh hold on let me catch up it's a lot more user friendly than it used to be um and just works in some ways now, but it's not just an install and it works system. OK, you can override what the algorithm. Uh, for who takes priority to if you want. Nice. Um, that shouldn't be needed for something. This light. You could look into baking the skeletal animals to texture textures so you can make them static with vert shaders. Ooh, that would be a lot of work, I feel like, for Siege. But yeah, that would be a possibility if we needed to. The problem with that is that I couldn't dynamically like, well, I guess I could to, like change the texture out. That, I feel like that'd be a lot of work. And I feel like it would look weird at different angles because I don't think you can make that work. Like from every angle. <laughs> but yeah, it could be. But there, I don't really want hundreds. I think like the most you're ever going to want on a screen at a time is like 50. And it runs pretty well right now with like 150 so I think if we just keep that like max like 50 is like end game end game like max I think it'll be fine I think the goal is like like yeah I think we could probably build like strategies in there where you can like zerg rush right which would be a good strategy like early on probably where you just like pump out a bunch of little low, like low level guys to just rig, rig rush um, the castle before the enemies have a chance to get like the big guys out but at the same time like I think Endgame stuff is going to be more about getting out big units like one big ram like one ram is going to be a lot bigger uh, a lot like a lot more beneficial than like 10 little guys so instead of like and if you wanted to defend the ram you wouldn't put out like 10 like footmen like infantry footmen or whatever and then a ram you'd want to put out like a knight or something or someone with like more defense which is gonna be a lot more expensive than just like one infantry so I think the the goal is like balance it around the fact that you want big units not a whole bunch of small units. So as long as we have big units at the end for like end game stuff, then I think it'll be fine. Um, early on, it might get a little crazy because we're only going to have a handful of units for testing. So like testers are probably going to see some performance problems when they have like a whole bunch. But I don't know. We have to test it and see. So really like what we should be doing is like spending our time doing that. Um, yeah, I'm almost positive this is the same documentation I was looking through. Uh, I was looking at 5.3. But it should be like identical. <laughs> it probably is. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty sure I followed this exact setup. And I'm pretty sure it just said like. 
Uh, in the budgeting section, enable auto calculate significance. Okay, maybe I did miss some stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I need to turn this on. Okay, let's look at this really quick. Um, first of all, let's fix the animation blueprint for the character really quick. Uh, actually, it's not in the character. It's just the player character thing. Oh, you know what? We need to make a new animation blueprint just for him. This isn't going to work for the player character. But, well, it's yeah, it's not because they don't. It doesn't use. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> yeah, so this guy, I need to just find him and duplicate it. Sorry, we got to do this real quick because our character's broken, <laughs> and it's been bothering me. We are not going to use this. Or this, we're not going to use this or this. We're going to do get speed. Uh, and this actually needs to be speed divided by max speed, I think. And then we multiply this by 100 because that's what our range is on our blend space. Oh, I did this wrong. I'm an idiot. I did this wrong. Copy that. Close it. It's the cavalry one we need to duplicate. Because he's on a horse. I forgot that our character is on a horse. Uh, player character, that's fine. Where's our character player that I need to delete? Okay, this should be working. Uh, we need to do... In here, we don't want this anymore. For that, we want this one. There, and we want our speed. Now we should be... File, okay. Play, and we should... Nope, still not working. Uh, oh, I know why. Uh, player character... Mesh. This needs to go. Better character. And now, yeah. Okay. So now we're back. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I didn't want to. We need to keep the, the that more complicated animation loop for our character since he's not just charging and stopping. Okay. Let's go find our pawn unit because this is. I really don't even care about performance on the characters. It's just one of them. So in here, this is where there's a budgeting section now. I assume. And that's probably what I missed. Nope, not there. Set an animation budget allocator. In order to take advantage of this, uh, you must set the character blueprints mesh components component class. Oh. Okay, tell me I don't have to like redo all my animation stuff. Mesh. Variable component class. Why do I not see this? <laughs> I'm, I'm so confused. the mesh component open the details panel set the component class property i don't see a component class i'll write you up some quick steps if you like in discord um the basic steps make sure you set your skeletal mesh components to okay so uh, so I need to make a budgeted. Yeah, 
damn it. <laughs> this is annoying. Um, because now I have to go back through and set them all up again. That's eh, okay. I guess I... Yeah, I guess I do. Okay, so we use this one, and then here we go. Now we have... Um, where is it? Who is this guy? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just use... um. This is the... Doesn't really matter what font this is. <laughs> okay, and then under variable, we have component class now, budgeting... I don't see component class still. Am, am I blind? I have anim class. I don't see... Why do I, like, why, how am I missing this? without doing that just change the type i'm confused you could build a mechanic of a catapult same as the age of empires 2 it can do spread damage for long range yeah we have a catapult also an enemy unit gets too close the catapult can't attack that unit yeah that'd be cool hang on i'm trying to catch up i have discord messages too without doing that just change the type and if you do it on the base class it will propagate so oh i see what you're saying oh you're saying change wait what are you i'm confused i don't see i don't see how i'm supposed to change the type what do you mean instead of i like i don't have to add a new skeletal mesh here is that what you're saying you just change the type of this. How do I do that? No, <laughs> no, the Discord. So I'm looking at that though. Like, here's the mesh. I click the mesh, and then I'm looking over here at variable. I don't have a variable section at all. I have a budgeting section now, but I don't have a variable section. Like, you watch me search for it. I don't have it. Do I need to compile first? I don't, I don't know. I don't have a variable section. But that doesn't exist. Like, if I, turf, if I type in component... Class... I don't have that. I don't, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong here. I've, I've added the, the skeletal mesh budgeted. I don't know how to switch this one to a, a budgeted, so I'm going to have to just replace all these. It's only, a, it's only a handful of units, though, but that's still. I have an, all I have is the anim class. I don't see variable in, in here anywhere. I have this section, but I don't. Okay, so I do have variable. I lied. I have variable name, but I don't have the option that I'm assuming I should have. Um, I will mention that this is not um, this is inherits from pawn, not character. I don't know if that matters. Don't add a new one. It's at the very top and do it on the base mesh, not the one you added. Okay, but there's no option for that. <laughs> All I have is category, tooltip, variable name. I don't have that option.
Maybe it's because she's not a C++ project. I mean, I can go make a C++ project. It doesn't matter to me. I was actually thinking that I kind of want to try making um, like my spawner in C++. Probably not actually, it's pretty complicated, but I don't know. This is not really important right now. We should not be focusing on this. We should just be getting the game working. <laughs> um, this is something that I can work on another time. Everything is working as of right now. So let's close all this junk that we're not messing with anymore. We can leave our units open because we need to put stuff in there. We can close these. We need our base unit open still, probably. It's okay. Um, thank you, Baseman, for helping me. Um, I will look into that later and figure out why I don't have that. Um, uh, but yeah, right as of right now, probably not important. The, like I said, I, I I think we can find ways to balance it to limit it in game mechanically, um, because I really don't I don't think we need hundreds of units anyway. I think that's just going to it's going to break the game. So uh, having a limitation is probably a good idea in the first place. Like we should probably do a thing where it's just like the first level of this or whatever just like has like a limit of like 10 units, right? And then we'll just make sure that the enemy doesn't spawn any more than like 10 or 15 units at a time. We'll just like wait if there's too many. That'll be fine too. Or I can do like um, a spawning point system, which is kind of what I was thinking of anyway, where like every unit is like a number of points and I can and like those points can go higher depending on how far along you are in the game. So like you'll start out and you'll, you'll it'll start with like three points, right? So it can spawn any units it wants up to three points. And then at like, I don't know, like five minutes, whatever, you'll have like six points, 10 minutes, you'll have like 10 points, etc. Like it'll just keep growing. I don't know. That's not a good, but you know what I mean? And we'll just use like a map range or something for that. Um, that could be a good way to do it. But yeah, um, Omega and the catapult idea is a great idea. So how the units work right now is they just have like a range on them. Like if I hit play, you'll see they have a um, like a circle around them. Not my guy, but these guys do see a little circle around them. That's their attack range. So when they get when that hits something else, they can attack. So the knight has a bigger one. He can attack bigger. It's not much bigger, but it's definitely bigger. Um, and then like the archer will have like a much bigger one, right? So when they hit that point, they'll stop moving and start attacking and the, like whatever hit them first, they'll start attacking first. So there's no like actual like physical check to see if they their you know, swing hits something. It's all just mechanically done behind the scenes. Um, that's what we're going to set up like literally right now. And so the catapult would just have like a huge one, right? It'd be like massive. Um, but I, we probably maybe we do a thing where like when it does damage, it would like calculate distance and do more damage at long range. And as it, the enemy got close, it would like or maybe it would just take every time it attacked, it would just like calculate um, all the enemies and take the one that's like furthest or something. Um, and like prioritize that. So like it wouldn't even attack when it was close to it. And so you'd have to have other units around it to like defend against it when those units got close. And then we could also calculate like the further it is, the more damage it does. So like maybe like at max range, it does like, you know, 150% damage. And then like right up next to you, it does 50% damage. So you can have like this nice range. I think that would be really fun. Are you going to have some units that can either switch or attack across lanes? Um, oh, so that's a good question. Because as of right now, if you have a, an archer um, and their range is big enough and they hit a unit that's on the other lane, then they can and they will stop and attack the other range. And the other unit will not do that, so they'll just keep going. So we need to do another thing where, like, if they leave the range, then they they just go back to do what they're doing. Um, so I think after every attack, we'll check to see if there's any units inside their radius that's that are still alive. And if there is, then we'll we'll like attack again. Um, and if there's not, then we'll just go back to what we're doing. So that so an archer could technically hit like right here, see a unit here, stop, shoot that unit, right? until he gets by. So they're almost like moving like towers, right? And I wasn't planning on that, but I kind of love it. It's kind of an interesting like dynamic. The The big problem with that, and maybe we shouldn't do that. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that's a problem. Maybe we should because we can also do a thing where we check to see if um if the enemy's in the same lane as you because they do track which lane they're in. And right now all we're doing is checking to see if their faction is different than yours to attack and that they're, they're alive. So we could check that you're a lot. They're alive. 
they're in the same lane and they have the, and they have a different faction. Maybe like maybe certain units or maybe there's like an upgrade you can do that'll allow you to do that. I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, you can also look into weaknesses and strengths. Yeah, I think like that would be that would be cool too if you were like there were certain units that were strong against melee but weak against range, things like that. We could do that. We could do um like a damage type, like melee, range, uh siege, right? And that way we can do like bonus damage. Some units take more damage. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh I wonder if maybe, yeah, sorry to distract you. <laughs> if you want a hand at any point, just take me. I will. Sounds good. Thank you. And yeah, I no, and, and I don't I don't mind the distraction. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I got a little flustered. I was just like, it's annoying when like you're looking at the documentation and it's like, just do this thing, and then you go to do it and you're like, it's not the same anymore. And I don't think there's anything different, right? So that's that's annoying, but I'm not annoyed at you. Um, I'm annoyed at the documentation. And uh, but yeah, mostly it was just kind of like I don't want to waste time doing like optimization things right now. Um, I think the priority is just like get the game running. And then if there's and then if there's like performance problems, then we look into optimizing and I spend that time then. So that's what I, that's what I've been trying to use or I've been kind of trying to do it. So, OK, moving on. Let's go get our um, footman. Um, let's sort. There we go. So I want to get our footman going. So let's go make an animation. For him so let's go find these animations oh man how funny would that be if we didn't have an attack animation we do there's two attacks uh so let's right click here and let's create can we not create an, an anim montage from this oh great i'm done uh, we want anim montage, so it's going to be mt underscore dwarf underscore attack underscore melee. Oh, we also need to decide uh, we, building archers is not going to be very much fun. We have to do projectiles. I think we're going to fake it, but still. No, I don't. I mean, we're going to fake the. We're probably going to fake the. Uh, uh, damage like the like the collision on the projectile. Because I think when the when the projectile hits the ground, no matter what it hits, it'll still do damage to the thing. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just do actual like projectile. Won't be a big deal. Okay, so we have that. Um, we can do one for each of them, I guess, or we can just have the one montage. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to decide if we should have. We also have a death uh, and we have a take damage. So let's just make Oh, we should probably do a take damage montage as well. Let's wait on that one, though. Uh, and then we also need a death. We need to put all those in the struct. So attack A, attack B. Let's create a montage for attack B. See, we could put the attacks both in the same montage and then just shuffle between them. But there might be some like bosses and things like that that'll have like way more than one than just two attacks and there might be some that just have one attack and i don't know if there's a way to get how many montage how many slots are in a montage um or uh, uh sequences or segments sections that's what they're called And we could also just like have them. Yeah, we could also just play, have them play like animations back to back. They just do two attacks. We could we could also make upgraded montages. So like you they get like advanced training and then they can do two attacks or something. That could be kind of cool. So we have we could have like we could have, we could put them in a sequence and then they just do the first attack. And then when they get the advanced training, then we do the whole sequence. We do both sections. I don't know if there's an easy way to do that with the play montage where it's just like we just swap. I assume it's because I have I have only worked only ever worked in C++ projects. 
Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I can I can easily just convert it to a C plus plus project. Take take one minute to do that. And like I said, I want to start learning C plus plus. So using this is a good would be a good place to like just kind of tinker and make a base class somewhere. Even if it, even if I'm just exposing blueprints for a base class and then I inherit from that, that would be a nice like step one in learning C plus plus. So um, anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. How do we want to do this? I guess let's just do let's just do a basic montage for now. Like there's an attacks. I have an, an attacks uh, thing in the thing right here. So let's just grab these two. Um, Sorry, my nose is all like super stuff. Okay, and then let's go to our pawn unit and we'll go to uh, event graph. Um, so we have this is what happens when we hit the things. So this is where we're checking to see if they're not in, if oh, if you're not in combat, we're checking if we can, if we can attack. Um, I think this attack needs to also check if we're valid. I think, or if we're still alive, I think it's doing this. Let's just take can attack, uh, is alive and not in the same faction. Yep. Okay. And then if we are, we're going to get the health component. We're storing this so we know who our a target is, which is that health component, which is kind of weird the storing the health component, but I'd rather do that than get it every single time. We want to change it, so we're going to do that. <laughs> um, and then start combat happens over here. We are setting combat to true. We're starting a timer for the attack. Um, we're going to call the attack immediately and then we'll do it. Then we'll do a one second timer for the attack after that, though. I think this needs to be a cooldown. Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah, because it would be kind of nice to different. Um, yeah, let's let's just do this. Let's just do um, about this to a variable. Actually, let's not. Let's not do that. Instead, we'll just get stats. And let's just crash the engine again by changing a struct. Save everything just in case, and then we're going to add an attack speed. And then I'm going to put a tool tip on this that says in seconds. Delay between attacks in seconds. And then we're going to put that up there by damage. Attack speed and attack range. Oh, it needs to be a float. Save. And then the default will be one. All right, there's our attack speed. That's the thing I hate about these is like when you change the struct or add something, then it shows up in the like because it's not hidden. And I wish it was like they were hidden by default, I guess, when you break a struct. But <laughs> OK, there's our attack speed. So one second by default. So this turns on attacking. We're setting our manual velocity to, to 0 0.01. Actually, this is not important anymore. We don't need to be doing this, which is actually super cool because it means we also don't need to be doing like this. Oh, yeah, and that doesn't work either, so we don't need to do this either. This is supposed to align the health bar over the top of the um, character's heads, even if you're like in the wrong location, but it doesn't do that either. Um, and the health price doesn't even show up until you they take they take damage anyway, so it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, cool. That saves us some performance there, I'm sure. <laughs> Not having to to calculate velocity every frame. What else? What else? Um, uh, when we start combat, we are rotating toward our target. We need to do a thing where when we start combat, we should probably check to make sure that our or actually maybe during the attack, 
before we actually do the attack, we should check to make sure that the um, person we're attacking is still alive. Let's let's just get this working and then we'll add that in. That's what this note is right here too, is telling me to remember to do that. Ah, uh, play rate one, this async loads our random attack animation from the list of attacks. That's probably fine that we just do random. It would be kind of nice if each attack had a, its own cooldown. So if we had like a special attack on a boss or something, it would do that special attack and then wait. But we could always add that in later as like a boss special thing on the blueprint. Okay. Now, the tricky part is this should just work, but we need to know like how to deal damage or like we need to be able to like tell it to deal damage at a certain time in the month in the montage. So we need to go in. Let's go to characters. Um, I don't I want to put it where my animations are, but that's in like the third party asset stuff and I don't want to do that. So let's just. Um, Add a new folder in here. We'll just call this montage notifies. Under units, and then we'll put in here. We need to make a new blueprint class uh, notify. Uh, anim notify. That's what I want. NFY underscore uh, deal damage. I think our music stopped. So we're switching to this music. Who just woke up from his nap and started waving at you? Aw, hi buddy. This hat really like showed off my gray hair. Look how gray it is. Oh my gosh. I'm fucking so old. Why'd you guys make me so old? I have a bone to pick with the person who created this character. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna override our receive notify. And we are going to get our mesh component. We're gonna do get owner. I could cast here because we know that these are all going to be um, pawns and that would be like a justified thing to do, but I don't like casting and I'm doing my very best to only cast when it's absolutely necessary because I'm trying to avoid any sort of dependencies in this project just as best practices. Um, so what we're going to do is instead of casting, we're going to go make a new interface call, which is going to be under here, probably BPI unit. And we're going to do, we have get health bar, but I need to get get health component. And we're going to return the health component. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. So that goes here. Then we go get health component. We need to go back to the my elbow hurts. <laughs> um, so get health component that goes here. Easy. I absolutely love inheritance and I love interfaces. There's something so satisfying about like building a whole like system like this. It's so much fun. Anyway, uh, health component. Now we're going to do take damage message. We don't technically need a message there, but we're going to. Um, we have an option to do percentage here. Let's promote this because now we can set up. Um, uh, we need to get stats too. So get stats. And then we need a way to tell the attacker that we're, oh wait, hold on. I'm doing this wrong. Wait, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm trying, 
I'm gonna be doing damage to itself. I don't wanna do that. So we don't need the health component of this character. But we should make, actually, what I'm gonna do, this is something that Swords of Magic does not do and needs to do. We need to check to see if this is alive first before we do anything in this this montage. Like we might do the animation, but we're not gonna do the damage if the character died before the animation finished. Cause that's only fair. Not that it matters that much in this game, but good practices again. Okay, uh, we don't need this. This take damage is gonna have to be done on the target. So I need to do, I need to get target and I don't think I have a ball for that. So you can make one. So when you do get target, um, yeah, we'll just do get target. And then that's just gonna be a health component. Because that's how we handle our target. Um, and then we should probably, well, we can just do this valid in there, that's fine. <laughs> get target, that's our stored. Oh, am I crazy? I swear we are storing this. Target health component. Oh, done. It's probably under this component section, not under the variable section. I always forget that it does that. File save. Okay. And now we go back to our not if I deal damage. Okay, so we're gonna do get target. I wish there was a like cancel. Like if there was like a like a way in a notify to cancel an animation if then if something here fails. Maybe this does. It'd be interesting if this if this failed if this canceled the animation. But I guess that would be that'd be silly if it failed for like like you I don't know. I don't know I don't know where you get where this return value shows up. I'm gonna leave it negative and see if it like breaks things. Or uh off, I mean. Negative. Okay. The target. We do take damage there. We get stats here. I don't know if calculating damage and stuff inside of a notify is a good idea or if this should just be like get this information and then send it to a thing to like or just like honestly it should probably just like call a function on the pawn to actually like fight like to do your attack. <laughs> Maybe we should actually because then we don't have to get all this information. We just need the target. Because then this, then that could cancel the animation. Oh, catch you later, Omega. Sorry. Yeah, instead of getting all this information from here, we should probably just get it. Just like we already have it on the pawn, so we should just have like a like a deal damage target function or something we could just call. Okay, let's just do that. Let's just that's a smarter move. So we're just gonna do um do attack damage. Or a, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then we can do things like this is where we could put in like effects. Like we could have like, um, I don't know how I'm going to do effects. I want to, I think I'm going to build. I actually kind of want to bring over for my healing game, my, um, my status effect system. Cause that was actually pretty damn solid. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. So I think I might move that over. 
Oh, I don't mean I don't mean visual effects. I mean like status effects. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I agree. That would be nice. Uh, let's input. I don't know, cause like the cool thing about this is we can put modifiers, like like damage modifiers on the notifies. We can put effects on them. So like we can have three different attacks on an enemy. One of them does like fire damage, right? Like and we'll catch the enemy on fire or something. Like we can do all kinds of stuff like that. So that will be cool. So let's just uh, let's just like let's do damage. Um, let's do um, attack damage. No, multi I don't know. How do we call this? We'll just do damage multiplayer for now. And then we'll do what else we bring through. Let's do. Let's put an effect on here. I just I don't know what it's going to be like. Or let's just do like satisfact. I don't know if this is just going to be like a name. I, let me let me open up the other project. I'm not going to move it over right now, but I just want to know how I've set it up. So I have like I'm just prepared for it. I just really like how I did this status effect system and it's like pretty much flawless if I remember correctly. Um, the entire game was based on it, so like it's pretty good and I don't want to build it again. So the only issue with notifies is they are not very reliable. Really? We use them for all of our damage in Swords of Magic and I don't think we've ever had an issue, even in multiplayer. I'm surprised. I guess um, it depends on what you put on them, I guess, maybe. Um, like I was just saying we're, we should put a bunch of um, combat stuff on them. And I was like, wait, let's not do that. Actually, let's just call one. Let's just call one function back onto the attacker that says, OK, I'm dealing damage at this time. <laughs> Rather than putting all that information on the notify, we can put variables on the notify like damage modifiers and effects and things like that. And that's kind of what I want to do. OK, um, spells. No, yeah, status effects. I'm afraid that I built this not modular at all, and I'm going to have to. Actually, no, I made this super smart. They're just components. What does it do? It has an effect proc. If I if I was really smart, I have no casts in here at all. Yes, look what I did. I'm such a smart boy. Um, we have refresh duration. We have begin play grabs an effect ID into a status effect data table. Um, waits for a duration starts at effect tick. Expiration method, we expire, or we remove a stack and repeat, or we just repeat. I even made, yeah, like this is, I like this. I did such a, such a good thing. I have a struct for status effects, so I can probably just move this component over and it'll grab everything we need. And we can probably just like, like hook it right in. Like I bet we hook it right in and it'll probably just work. The only issue we might run into is We'll have to build a UI for it. We remove component, call effect removed. We can do that on like, yeah, that's this is good. Remove satisfact happened happens DPI combat. So we do need a some some combat stuff, which I don't know about that.
get satisfact component. So we are looping through the components by class. We're comparing the class for the effect, the satisfact, and then we're moving it. Okay, yeah, no, this is easy. Okay, uh, we will move this over. I'm not gonna do it right now, but uh, it is a name. That's all I wanted to know. So satisfacts are names from a data table. So, oh, getting a phone call, I think. Hang on. Oh, it's Mr. Likely, Mr. Scam Likely. Okay, so yeah, status fact, name, good. We're good here. Okay, so where were we? Uh, notify. We're, we don't care if the target's alive. We're going to do that on the attack thing. We just want, we don't even care about the target. We don't care about the stats. We don't care about taking damage. I literally just do this and let me promote this. Do we have multiple satisfacts? Because it'd be kind of cool if it was like, oh, this one stuns you and poisons you. Let's do it. Please don't crash. Thank you. Okay, now we go back to the pawn. We should now be triggering this new function called do attack damage, which now will pop out over here. So we start combat, we do the attack, and then right over here, we're gonna do, uh, actually we should probably play like an, a montage on like interrupted or, because if we, if we interrupt with like a stun or something that cancels, the animation or plays a, another animation then we'll do that in fact maybe we should have that for like the attack damage like if certain attacks can cancel other attacks then we do the un uninterrupted Because we'll take the skeletal mesh and do cancel or like stop animation, stop playing montage or whatever. Do we have to do that from here? No, we can do it from here, right? Stop animations, yeah. Okay, well we'll worry about that later. We'll add that in later. That's a that's a feature. I'm emerging from a lurk. How are things progressing? What's up, Soupy? Uh well, I'm actually getting a lot more done today than I thought I was going to. Have fun. Cheers. You out of here, Rayu? Catch you later. Okay, um, let's do... I'm going to make this status effect um, system more modular and I'm going to sell it on the marketplace. It's it, like it's simple, but like it it does everything you need it to do. And it's pretty I think it's pretty damn cool. It's like it works exactly like gas, except it doesn't require all the garbage that gas requires to like work. So anyone who just like buys it can just like hook it right on their character and then just like trigger things they want to trigger through a blueprint interface and it's done. Take, it would take like five minutes to set up. Okay. Um, so now we actually need to do get our target health component and take damage. We need to make sure that we're alive still and our target's still alive. You know, I wish that our is alive was a pure call, but I guess it's not possible. Oh, actually. 
actually is alive is not calling the health component, is it? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, you're alive, enemies alive. I should build a function for this, this would be easier. And we can do like, let's just move this into a function. <laughs> and we're gonna call this function damage calculation. Oh yeah, I guess I also need... I need to know if... Let's see, where's the do attack damage? Percentage. I don't know what I'm doing with this. I just... I, I built it in here thinking I might use it and I probably won't ever use it, so I don't know what it matters. But I set it up to like so I could have attacks that did percentage damage instead of just damage. So you could be like, oh, this enemy always does 10% damage or whatever. Or this one attack that takes 20% of your health, whatever. I don't know if it's important. Um, it actually might be important for healing, but I didn't set it up for healing, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, promote this to variable two. Music is loud. Yeah, I agree, Sinus. Well, you know, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, Soupy, I'm pretty sure before I end the stream today, we're going to have this fully, like, playable. Because we're almost there. Okay, um... Head back here. Okay, so we are able to do damage. So now we're going to... We need to know... We need a damage modifier. And then I don't know how we're going to apply the status effects yet, but I'm just going to leave that alone. What is this? Oh. We could make, we could turn this right here into its own function that just says like, can deal damage. Which seems a little bit unnecessary, but like. It might be useful other places. Maybe not. This is probably the only place we're doing damage calculation. Let's just leave it. This is a float. Okay, let's get our stats. The damage times. Um, get. Modifier, what's it called? Damage modifier. <laughs> that goes in there. Oh, and then this is where we would have um, damage types and weaknesses. So maybe we do that here too as well. Let's just do it real quick while we're here. Let's make a new blueprint enum or enum, enum underscore damage types. Let's just make three of them for now. Let's do melee, ranged, and siege. Uh, maybe a heal? Or magic? Let's do magic. Should we have healing? Nah.
Let's do healing. What else should we do? Look, so and I agree gas is amazing. It's just um there are some projects like this one. Gas would be such a such a stupid thing to set up for this project. Like it just doesn't need it, right? Gas is great if you're like, cool, I'm making an, another four year long, you know, RPG project. Use gas, you know, or I'm making a first person shooter that, you know, has like, you know, 20 hours of content. Use gas, right? But if you're like, I'm going to make a little, you know, strategy RPG, but I'd like there to be, I'd like to use some elements from gas, but I don't want to set up. I don't want to go through and set up all of gas. I don't want to set up like all the attributes. Like I don't want to do any of that jump, right? That's where like it's annoying. Gas simplifies all the things. It simplifies all the things once you go, once you deal with all the complexities of setting up gas and learning how to use it and like building all your abilities and everything that, yeah, but it's still way more, way more complicated. No, copying all the stuff from Lyra is not as easy as it sounds. I mean, it might be for someone like you who's been doing this a bunch, but the whole point of like making a blueprint based um, satisfact system using components is that we get I get the benefits of all the status effect like all the um, gameplay effects from gas without having to deal with all the other garbage that comes with it that I don't want to deal with because I don't want gameplay I like I don't want to have to use gameplay effects because then I have to deal with like all of my stats now have to come from the gameplay ability system I can't just like modify other like variables with that um, unless I do like executions then it's just that that's a whole nother like thing like and I don't want to deal with that right it's just so tedious and so much work to set up for when I just want a gameplay effect. So I think, yeah. Gas Companion, I might look into it. Uh, I think Gas Companion does a great job cutting out all that hay. I might, maybe I'll look into it. I don't know. I think gas is still a lot of bloat. Um, if you want to do calculations that are, yeah, I don't know. Um, my this satisfaction system in this one is so easy right like it's so simple it literally just every satisfaction just adds a component to the character and then does a tick effect that does the thing and then when it's when it's done then it removes the component and then you can just check to see if that component exists there it's just so it's it's so easy um i even have it built in where like you can't apply this effect until unless you have another component of this type right like I have all that stuff built in. I have expiration methods built in. Like it's it it took me like a day to set up um to build the whole thing, which probably would have taken me the same amount of time to set up gas and get it working. Maybe it probably would have taken me a couple days to set up gas to be honest, to get it working. Just because I'm not as familiar with with C. So I just feel like for the time it took me to build this and like the time it'll take me to move this over to my other project and use it, I bet I can have all this working in an hour. That's way faster than it would take me to set up gas. And it's and it's just what I need. It's not anything more than what I need. So it's just my opinion. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying don't use gas. I'm just saying if you're making a little project that doesn't require all the, the bloat that gas does, like don't then don't use it. That's my opinion. I'm allowed to have it. Dang it. You can have your own opinion. And you can share it with me if you'd like. I don't care. Um, all this is fine. We could have like a custom attack calculation too. Now that we're doing this as a damage calculation, which means we could do a thing where like, I don't know, let's say we have like a unit that's like does more damage if it's, if it's, if it's damaged, right? Like that would, then you could like, we could add that in here too. Pretty easy. Um, but I'm not dealing with that right now. That'll be all. Those are all bridges I can cross when I'm ready to cross those bridges. OK, um, this is great. Now, if this is a killing blow, this is important. This is the killing blow. This is where we need to, like, rethink about or like, like find a new target, basically. So we only need a function that like grabs a new target from the range. If there's one, if not, then we're going to cancel combat. So let's make a new function called. Excuse me, where's our functions? Um, find, try, find new target. Perfect. That's perfect English. Love it. And then we get our attack range, combat radius, combat radius, and we do get, act, get overlapping actors. 
components. We won't get that won't be a component we can overlap, so we won't do that. Actors. We're only looking for pawn oh um, no. I don't want to filter this because So, units should prioritize other units when they're attacking the base. And the base itself is probably not going to be of type pawn because I don't want to have to deal with that. But it is going to have a health component on it. So I think I just need to loop through these and find anything that has a health component. So I'll probably just do like does implement. Let's see. Um, Probably just look for an interface. What interface do I want though? Health bar component? No. Um, unit? I guess I can give it unit. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle the base. I should have thought this through before I built all this. Because um, the base itself needs to be attacked just like everything else does. So it needs health. It needs a health bar component. But I don't want it to inherit from the same class, which is why I want to make the health bar component or the health component, not health bar, the health component, a separate thing. So I guess, yeah, we'll just look to see. No, because the actual thing doesn't. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do get component by class. And now we're going to health component. That's how we're going to do it. So anything with a health component, we can attack. If it doesn't have a health component, that means we can also use this uh, yeah we could technically use this also for inner uh, resources though i did not build them with that in mind so we probably won't do that we're probably going to fake resources like when the harvesters go to the resources to, to interact with them they'll probably just go to a resource that is there and then they'll just stand there do an animation for a little bit and on their like their animation or whatever they'll just harvest a resource they'll just get one resource to carry back up to however much they can hold Oh, there are a lot of ways to do things. Yeah, agreed. I have a module that lets you start using gas within minutes. I mean, that's cool. Do you? You should sell it. Um, honestly, I don't know. I would probably use the gas companion thing if I wanted to make another big game. If I want to make a game with like serious combat, like even like the Mender's Quest game. If that wasn't like a game jam game for two weeks, I probably would have looked into that too. Because I think it probably would have been better in the end there's a bunch of combat in the game that's like all the game is is combat that would have been really helpful much more cpp focused oh yeah okay we have the companion we should pr or the um component we know that we can do whatever so now we just need to check like is alive and we need to check uh get faction Oh, so this is another thing. We will have the... Oh, so it's going to have to have BPI unit. Unless we put that on the, the health component, but I don't think I want to do that. I guess we need to do can't can attack. That's like all we have to do, really. I know this will work for units. I'm just nervous that this isn't going to work for... It's okay. We'll make it work. So we're going to have to give it the BPI unit. That's fine, though, I guess. Okay, so we do try to find a new target. If we find one, we return. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess just having like a return value. There's a way to do this. That'll be true. And then completed will be turn. False. Um, let's go back to here. If this is the killing blow, then we're going to try to find a new target. We should, there should probably be like a delay on like the, like we just killed something. We should probably wait. Um, because I'm pretty sure when combat starts, I am, I immediately trigger the swing, um, which means you'll like hit an enemy and immediately start attacking another enemy, like right, right away. And that's going to feel weird. So we might want to put a delay in this. The problem is that it's in a function, so I can't do a delay here. So maybe we should have a, um, a Boolean on like the, like the, uh, combat start, like right here where we do the start combat. We should check to see if we want to do this or not. Or we just, we just, they walk up, they prepare to attack and then they attack. So they'll just like, they'll just have to wait their, their attack speed. Let's just do that. That's not really a big deal because otherwise they're going to like get in range. The second they get in range, they start attacking, which is fine. But I, I don't think it's a problem if they stop, wait one second, then start attacking. Um, the only real problem is that enemies are going to um, enemies and they're going to hit the exact same time and immediately attack at the exact same time, probably. Right. So we might want to like stagger it. So like. I don't know. We could do a random wait time, I guess. <laughs> like when we first start combat, just like a random delay between like zero and two seconds or something. Just the one time. Maybe just like a random float. We'll do that for now and see how that works. Okay. Anyway, so if we find that uh, target, oh, let's just go back to damage, I guess. If this is a killing blow, then we need to uh, try to find a new target. And then if we are we doing, we're setting it in here, right? Yeah. Then this is what we want to do. If we find one. See, I feel like this should be. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do this here. Because we're already returning the killing blow here. So let's just return. Successful. And then this will be if it's the killing blow or not. If it's not the killing blow, then we'll just keep doing it. Keep doing what we're doing. If it is the killing blow, then we want it to cancel and do, do our new things. Let's go back to here. Okay. Um, Attack. So here's our dude attack stuff. <laughs> Sound effects we're not doing yet. Percentage, we'll do this. Modifier goes there. Okay, if this, if we, if we successfully did damage. I don't even know if I care about that right now. Oh, this is where I would cancel it. That's right. So let's do this. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Can't duplicate that reference. Um, we'll do stop animation. If we fail to do damage, if for some reason damage can't be done, then we'll just we'll just cancel the animation so we don't keep doing whatever it is. Um, I guess I guess we don't even need to do that. Like they swung and nothing happened. We could, oh, you know, what we could do is have like a dodge rate. That'd be kind of cool too. So you have a chance to miss. I see you P. Me, every time I hear someone say CPP. <laughs> uh, did I say CPP? 
I probably did, huh? Yeah, I read that. I mean, it's a little faster than saying C++, but I there is no reason to say CPP instead of C++. When is it appropriate to, to write out CPP instead of C++? Whenever? You just did twice. <laughs> yes, I know I did twice now. That's not what I meant. Uh, I'm getting hungry. I am need a break. When you finish this up, we're almost done. Then we can test it and then we'll break. We'll take a break. I'll probably take, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to take like a 10 minute break and grab lunch. And then we'll come back and keep working because uh, I want to get this done today. Finish the whole game today. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't even know if this matters. I'm going to leave this here. I'll just leave it empty for now. And later if I'm like, oh, I need to plug that into it or plug into that, then I have it. Uh, okay. If this is a killing blow, then we need to try find new target. If we find one, that's when we start combat again. Honestly, I don't think we even need to do this, do we? Should we start new combat again or should we just keep looping combat? Oh, yeah, because we want to rotate for the, for the character. Uh, and also, I guess attack speed could change at this point for some reason. Like maybe there's a reason to change. I don't know. Who cares? We'll just find start combat. That was called, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then if not, we're going to we need like a cancel combat thing, which I think is just going just this. I think it's just this. I think it's all we need to do. Um I think that'll just work. We might have to clear out our target. But maybe not. Um, okay, and then one last thing we need to do is every time we deal damage, we're we're doing damage calculation. Um, oh, right, 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 right. I know what we need to do. If this doesn't find a killing blow, then we need to try to find a new target because it means that target's not alive or we're not alive. If we're not alive, we need to like, oh, shoot, we might run into some problems here. We might still be able to attack while we're alive because we're not like checking that anywhere. Like we should probably be checking it here. Remember when combat ends, we need to check for any other enemies in the attack radius and focus on the next. Yeah, done that. Uh, need to do a callback function probably from the damage montage. Uh, notify VP so we know if the enemy has been killed or not. Maybe a find new target interface call if the damage. See, I'm not doing all that from the interface or the montage anymore. I'm a smart boy. OK, so all this is fine. Uh, I'm just worried that at any given time we want to make sure we're still alive. Um, I'm just trying to like, where's the best place to check for that? I guess probably on this attack right before the attack happens. We should check if we're alive because that way nothing else matters, because even if we do get. I guess here we're also checking if we're alive, so if we do, if we're alive here, and then we, during this async load or during the the beginning of our attack, we die. Then this will still trigger, like, we'll stop this. Maybe we do need to stop. No, we'll stop all animations if you die. So this shouldn't ever, this shouldn't ever trigger. This shouldn't ever fail the trigger because you are dead. But it might if the enemy has died before you attack. So if the enemy has died before you attack, then we need to figure out if we should find a new target. So maybe we do like is alive here. We check to see if like we're still alive. And if we are still alive, that means our target is dead, which means we can then do this. So another thing is we're not prioritizing units over. Actually, we're not doing any priorities. We're literally just finding the first thing we run into, and that's our target. 
um, in its overlapping actors. So we, we're going to have to do some prioritization here eventually. Let's just put a note here. Might need to prioritize units here based on some priority enum option and maybe prioritize units over base or bases over a base over castle over buildings i don't know over structures that's fine okay i think we're i think we're there i think this will work It's just right here. I think we need to check if we're alive still, too. If we're not alive, uh, I guess we don't do anything, right? We don't want to. What the pro the problem with the reason we don't want to do this is because if we are if we die while this timer is going off and then suddenly it's like, oh, sweet. Now we're. Oh, we need to do this, too, then. I guess it doesn't matter. We can just keep looping this while we're dead. We're just going to be playing a death animation and laying there, but like nothing else is going to happen because this is going to fail every time. And if we're dead here, it'll fail here, too. So we could we could grab this attack timeline and and pause this. Um, I think I had. Oh, I thought I had one. I thought I had an option to pause combat because we could also have a stun where you like stun and it pauses combat and then unpauses combat when the stun is over. That would be handy. Um, we'll deal with that later, though. We can just tack all this stuff on. It's not that big of a deal. Like most of this is like most of these random little ideas are just small things. Hey, what's up, Roro Zoro? How's it going? What is your game about? I'll tell you. Uh, it is a lane based real time strategy game. Uh, I just started a couple days ago. We're already almost ready for like we basically have an MVP done today. Hopefully uh, there's a couple more little features we have to add in then we're ready to go. Um, so basically you gather resources, you construct buildings over here. Um, I haven't decided if these are going to be set buildings or if you can choose which buildings um, you're not going to like choose where to place them. They're just going to be like plots that are like empty that you can like rebuild um, or construct from there. Uh, so you like build up buildings and then they'll unlock units and then you'll have a menu in the top left here that you can like queue up units for each one of these three spawners and then you'll like say queue up three units here or whatever and when the queue is finished then they'll it'll spawn three of the units and they'll start following the spline until they get to the enemy base where they just where they attack it uh in the meantime the enemy base is also going to be spawning units on the spline the other way and then if you run into them in the middle you fight and then like yeah so it's just going to be like a tug it's like a reverse tug of war kind of deal um but like RTS style. I don't know. I think it's going to be fun. You also have a hero unit you play that runs around and you will eventually have like a hot bar with a bunch of abilities you unlock between sessions. So here's our units that are spawning. Actually, let's see if this works because it should technically be working now. I guess if it's not working, then uh, we'll find out. This random spline at the bottom is just kind of crazy. I don't know if... I think these guys are going to meet first at the top here. Hopefully uh, we're saved because it, I mean, who knows? This could just crash. <laughs> here we go. They should fight each other right now. Okay, so that's not working. Pretty sure our footmen have... Oh, oh, snap. Oh, snap. There's attacking going on. Okay, health is not being done. Like damage is not actually being done for some reason uh, because these guys should have health bars that pop up. But maybe we've broken something somewhere else. The the wait time is nice. I mean, not that these guys would have been synced up anyway because they get there at different times. But honestly, like. Even though they're like they're definitely stacked up on each other, it's really not that bad. I think it'll be OK. OK, let's go figure out why this is broken. By end of day. <laughs> Interesting. Almost sounds like a tower defense. What platforms do you plan to port this to? Uh, I'll be launching it on Steam primarily. Um, and then we'll see, I guess, if 
I'm not planning on controller support right now. Like it would be nice, but I just don't know how well it's going to work. So maybe we'll do some controller support. I don't know. Um, but yeah, as of right now, it'll probably just be Steam. Um, maybe I'll launch on itch too, just cause and maybe humble, who knows? Um, so yeah, probably just PC though. I think like, I think, I don't think it won't, I think it'll run great on other consoles, other platforms. It's just, I don't know how to do, I haven't decided how I would do gamepad controls yet. So that's all. Oh, so we did these damage types. We never count. Oh, you know what? We probably didn't finish the damage calculation stuff somewhere in here because we set up damage types and never did anything with them. Damage calculation. No, we did. This should be working, so I'm not sure what I've done here. Okay, well, we set up the damage types. Uh, let's put a note in here. Uh, add weaknesses, resistances, resist, resistances. Sure. Um, for damage types on pawn, uh, no, on unit struct and take them into account here. Uh, okay, so where are we going wrong here? Maybe we're doing zero damage. I was testing this earlier and it was like, like the damage was being done and enemies were dying. So I don't know where we're broken. So we're going to step through this one step at a time. So let's just go to, we know the attacks happening. So let's go from here. And test it. Okay, we've done an attack. Only the dwarves are attacking right now because I haven't set up animation montages on anyone else. So that's that's, that's going to happen. Okay, async load is going to be stupid here. So oh, we know that well, we know the montage display is, is triggering too. Maybe this isn't triggering. Duh, I know it's wrong. <laughs> I found out what's wrong. Okay, MT. Uh, what's happening is our MTs are MT. Uh, we are not doing we're not putting in our notify we built. We need to add notify uh, deal damage. Okay, where is deal damage at? Right there. Save and oh, go back. This one. And then we'll do particles and stuff too, as well, eventually. Oh yeah, I should probably turn off the thing. I think this is working now. I think we broke the animation. Uh oh, are we like totally broken now? Are these all knights? The knights don't have animations yet, so they're not playing. There we go. All right, these guys are attacking. They're still not working. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's go put a notify in here really quick. Toggle. Okay, we broke there. Get owner on unit footman. Damage multiple. Oh, oh, damage multiplier is zero because we didn't set up LZ there. Okay, we got this. <laughs> um, hold on. We need to go back here and we need to expose these multiplier satisfacts and pre present damage. Let's not. Let's assume this just no for now. We'll we'll expose that later if we need to. Um, okay, and then we go back to our montage again, and we have these exposed now somewhere, right? details yes damage multiplier will just be one by default um let's just hold on let's just set this up by default one because i don't think we're gonna change this very much compile okay. and then yeah 
and then let's let's for this for this attack we'll do one and then this attack we'll do like we'll do three just so we can see the damn the difference and make sure that's working I don't know why I can't select these now. Like I can't see the details anymore. Oh, because I have to click notify done. Oh. So this this damage is one. This one. No. This one is three. Okay, that's that's right. Alright. Play again. Oh no. I did this the other day too. Uh, sometimes if you use, oh, it worked. Okay. Never mind. Sometimes if you use the slow mo command, um, it breaks things. Like it like hung the engine the other day and I was, it was like frozen for like 20 minutes and I finally just closed it. All right. This should work. Oh, but the wait for a footman. There's a footman. So it's hard to tell the difference between the units. We're going to have to really color code them, color code them better. All right. This guy stops. Um, so when you put the, the game in full screen, uh, what happens is when you, oh no, no, sorry, when you, when there's a break point and the game's in full screen, oh, oh, he's still attacking. Oh, so yeah, duh, we need to cancel that. But yeah, okay, we're having, we have some major errors. Okay, wait, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I do have a character, okay. Wait, can I not play? No, okay, hold on, I broke things. Hold on, I know, I know what's wrong most, for the most part. <laughs> anyway, when you have a we have full screen and you do a breakpoint, it freezes the, you can't do anything. You like, it just like pauses the game and you have to quit it to, to get back out. Stupid. Maybe you actually can get out of full screen again when you're a breakpoint now. Maybe that's been fixed in UE5. Um, controller support would be a good idea even if you don't launch it on either platforms. Um, would be good for accessibility and for use on Steam Deck. So someone gave numbers yesterday. I think it was like five. What was it? Five percent of people use gamepad or something like that on PC. No, maybe it was just their game. I don't remember. I don't remember. It was a low, lower number than I thought it was going to be. And uh, it was like you get like a bonus of like 5% sales or something like that if you have gamepad support. Um, but it depends on the game. Like people who play real time strategy games who would be playing this game are used to playing with mouse and keyboard. So um, at that time, we decided it wasn't worth worrying about gamepad support until the game makes money. And then we're like 5% bonus sales would be huge. Right. But if the game makes, you know, like two thousand dollars and five percent of that is negligible not worth the effort you know um but if the games makes you know thirty thousand dollars then that five percent is worth the effort it's worth to put that put it in and add the gamepad support so it really depends on how well it does um having gamepad support out of the gate might help that the game make more money to make you know it might be worth it at the time but i don't know yet i guess we'll see how many wish lists we have too if we have a lot of wish lists um and people are asking about gamepad support then that'll be That'll be useful. Then we'll add, we'll add it. The goal right now is just to get the game functional and then we'll go from there. Okay, this attack timeline, when we turn off combat, we need to turn off the attack timeline. I forgot that I needed to do that. I guess we could just check here if we're still in combat and then it'll just, well, I guess it'll just keep looping. But I don't want to do that. Or I guess we could check here for in combat and then turn it off. I don't know. Um, does this mean if I turn it off there? Oh, no. I, yeah, no, that'll work. Where is it? Yeah, 
Is this the only place where we cancel combat? Because if it is, then that's fine. If it's not, it is. I was gonna say if it's not, we need to make a function that's cancel combat. And we might still. Let's do this. Because I don't want to have to redo that. Even if it's just two nodes, it's still I'd rather just have a function that does it. Okay, this is getting we're having issues because we're doing health component via property is not valid because we killed the thing already. Yep, that makes sense. Um, because we're trying to tack still. Okay, so this should be working. Let's see. What else was wrong? I guess just because Oh, hold on, because we're simulating. Um, we were like the, the health bars were in a weird spot and they're, they're kind of broken. So let's try this again. to get a health bar where it's supposed to be now boom oh snap he does so much damage <laughs> uh i think he did the the triple damage hit maybe not i might have to change that drain effect because it might be too slow feels good though they're doing damage They're doing way too much damage, but they're doing damage. I feel like they were only supposed to do like three damage. They're doing like triple that. These guys aren't doing damage at all. Okay, let's go. Let's go set up the rest of them with damage and let's see who wins. Um, So we need to go set up. Um, mont I guess we can just give these guys the same montage for now. The knights can have the same montage. So let's go units. Uh, footmen will grab montages. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? Is it right click this copy? Copy is right click. I will figure this out. Right click copy left click. That makes sense. Um, paste. Cool. And then farmer, I guess, can have the same thing, even though they shouldn't. OK, and then also footmen are doing a lot of damage. Three damage and they have 20 health. Knights have 30 health and they're doing eight damage. Is that that montage is just doing so much damage? Is that why? Undead warrior. I'm giving them the same montage, but it's not going to work. It's like it's going to it might work, but it's going to make it's going to look all broken. Uh, but I'm going to give it to him anyway, because okay, we'll give it to these guys, too. <laughs> this one's definitely going to be broken, um, but we'll go make montage just them in a second. Um, let's go look at the montage. I wanted to remove the three times damage multiplier on that one. Yeah, I don't know why they're taking so much damage. Maybe our undead undead warriors don't have enough health. Oh, yeah, no, not even all. But maybe that's that's probably why this guy needs like. Let's just give him like 15 health and then the rider can have like 18 health, maybe 20. Let's do 20 speed 16. Let's give the rider a little more speed. Damage is one. Let's give the let's give them damage. Uh, two for the rider and one for the warrior. I don't know. We'll modify all these. These are all just like random numbers. I'm just punching in. So the rider should be doing damage now. Um, but he's going to look super derpy when he does it, I bet you. Because <laughs> he's going to, like, break his whole body to attack. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, we have combat. Oh, I'm getting a lot of lag on the stream, I just realized. It's not lagging at all for me. It's just the stream. Um, it's probably because I'm doing full screen. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is with full screen on... Um, in UE5, UE4 doesn't have that problem, at least I, from what I can remember. Yeah, I mean, obviously the dwarves are going to win. There's a lot more of them <laughs> and they're spawning very consistently. 
So those guys totally missed them. But yeah, they're they're attacking through lanes right now, which is I think fine. Hey, it feels good. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's next? Let's wait on the castle damage, because that's gonna be a thing that I don't want to deal with right this second. But we are gonna do it in a minute. Let's um. Let's slow down the spawn rate for the enemies, because I don't think we're going to have time. Eh, maybe we can. Um, yeah, well, yeah, well, I don't know. Let's do let's do cost. All right, barracks. What do you think? Let's do like 10 ore or stone. Maybe I don't know what we can call that five wood and like five food. We need to make more buildings, too. Well, I guess we need to make more units first before anything. Okay, the barracks when built will give us um, footmen and warriors, which is what we have right now. Or what footmen and uh, knights. Uh, the footmen, 20 health, 10 speed, 3 damage. The knight is uh, 30 health, 10 speed, 5 damage. So more more health, more damage. Same attack speed. We should check. We should check the attack speed. Let's do the footmen. And do attack speed. Let's do 0.3. That might just probably be way too fast because if you think about it, it doesn't speed up the actual attack animation, which might take a whole second. Um, it just attacks faster, which means it might it, it might attack so fast that it doesn't do the actual uh, animation. You know what I mean? So we might need to like set play rate on those two so they attack a lot faster. Like the play rate's faster. Um, we'll see about that. We'll, we'll manage that later. The sorry, let me try to explain it again. The animation will play, but we might not get hit get to the notify in the animation by the time it already restarts again because it's just gonna like yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Moving on. Um, but yeah, we're in a good state. Uh, the game is playable. Um, we need to make the units. We need to give the units a cost. Upkeep right now I think is zero on them both, or just one of them anyway. Food. Let's make uh, footmen. Just take two food, and let's just do no wood for now. Just just two food. Nothing else. Knights. We'll take uh, ore. One ore and three food. Let's do two ore and three food. Okay. So we have a couple more things we need to do before we're like test ready like we need resource gatherers so that's like gonna be the next step and then we need um being able to actually attack our bases uh and then i guess we need just need to set up a bunch of units and then we're ready so we probably got yeah i guess we're not totally ready for a test today but we might be by tonight we'll see okay we also need to stop the the spawners from spawning automatically so we have a debug spawning which we will turn off And then our player start. Let's bring it back to over here. OK, so the goal is right now we have to try to keep the enemies from hitting our base. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to have enemies at our base before we can even get enough resources harvested to like do anything. I think it was 10, 10 and 5 wheat. And I'm pretty sure we already have like people at our base. Yeah, <laughs> so that definitely didn't happen. Yeah, so we already have people at our base trying to attack it. And then this is going to be interesting because as soon as I pause this or, um, or um, as soon as I spawn these guys, we're going to have more problems. I'm 
I'm kind of thinking the, the click to move might be a better move. I don't know. I guess it's not like... I think the reason you'd want to do that... Let's spawn one here. Combat! Needs backup. Oh, I don't think I'm removing resources when I spawn things. Or maybe I didn't from the building? Oh snap, look how fast he attacks. That's so awesome, we need a rogue. We're definitely gonna do a rogue character. That's super cool, that feels so good. We're getting a bunch of errors, I don't know what the errors are. Probably just like trying to deal damage to something that's already just died. Health component, health component, yeah. Okay, we'll we'll look into that. It's probably, it's all just access none things, like the game's working. I don't know. I don't think I like that random delay when they get there. I think we should just take that out. I think if they just switch targets real fast and start attacking again, then we'll just that'll be fine. We can also just put the delay on the event, I think. Uh, where when it gets called. It feels good, except we did just like annihilate those guys, probably just because our footmen are like powerhouses right now. Cool. This feels good. Do you love your games in C++? All almost all blueprint. I don't know any C++. Uh, I only say, I say almost all Blueprint because uh, my main game, Swords of Magic and stuff, we used to have uh, another programmer at 1.2 programs on the team, um, plus me doing Blueprint stuff. So uh, there is some C++ in it, but not very much. But yeah, I would like to learn uh, C++ and I'm on my way. Um, I just had to do a bunch of C++ like digging a couple days ago to try to get my other project back in order because there's some C++ stuff broken in it. And so I was kind of digging through and I like I I can read C++ a little bit like I understand kind of what's going on most of the time. It's a little confusing. It's very confusing to me. Um, I'm just not very code oriented. I can program. I program this whole game in like two days, so I can definitely program. But I like blueprints. I just like visual stuff, I guess. Anyway, uh, I'm thrilled about this. This is awesome. Let's um, let's take a break. I need lunch. I think I'm going to take like a 15, 20 minute break real quick and I'll be back and we'll keep working. Or maybe, you know, maybe I'll just end it. Maybe maybe this is a good time to end stream. Uh, I've been streaming for what, four hours? What do you guys think? I also was I was also just thinking a minute ago and I didn't want to say it out loud because I was working on something else. Just like a thought just like crossed my mind and I didn't want to get distracted. But um the uh the characters we just bought could also be DLC. We get to that point. Do what makes you happy, boss man. <laughs> Thanks, Vox. Um I don't know what makes me happy. I want to keep working, but uh I don't want you guys to have to wait 20 minutes while I have lunch. So I think I will end the stream and I will just be posting stuff on Twitter and on Discord as I make progress. So uh, let's go find someone to raid. Plus, I bet Janet could probably use a break from the baby for a minute. So I'll go take over. Is there any chance that... Um, nope. Okay. Let's go raid Crimson. Uh, let's go raid... I think we have a Prismatica raid. He, Krim's got 85 people over there. I don't think we need to raid him. Like, let's go raid Prismatica before someone raids us. That's that's the that's the, the call right there. How does a lane-based RTS game work? Oh, Justin, I'll show you really quick. Actually, I'll show you while we're doing we're setting up the raid. Uh, so basically, you harvest resources. Um, you you play a hero unit, so you have like a, a hero that you run around on for now. Um, that will eventually have some like abilities you can use, but probably not the start of the game. You harvest resources, you bring them back to your base and you build up these um, like broken down buildings. And when you when you build a building, it unlocks units. You have uh, some UI at the top here. You can see one, two and three. These are the, the spawners that correspond to one, two and three right here. Um, you click those buttons, not those buttons, but when you unlock um, uh, units, they'll show up on those bars and then you can pick the ones you want to spawn in the ones you want. Um, so you'll spawn like units on whichever lane you want and then they'll just start marching. 
Um, you can have harvesters, which will stop midway to harvest resources. And then the um, the combat units will just keep going until they hit the enemy castle to attack it. But at the same time, the enemy castles also spawning units on the same lane. So it's like creeps in a MOBA meets like a regular RTS game, which is interesting because the MOBA was built from an RTS game. So it's like, I don't know, it's it's I don't know, it was an idea. We're, we're trying it. We're seeing how it works. Anyway, raid time. You guys have a great one. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Uh, I had a lot of fun today. We're not going to get time to do the credits, but um, I will be back on Tuesday at the latest. Um, so have a good weekend and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.